sleeping like a baby. Arnold, you could sleep through your whole life. Get up already. People sleep for one third of their lives. During sleep, the body is restoring. Some species of birds, marine mammals, and reptiles can stay awake for up to 10 days. One half of their brain is asleep while the other one is working. I think someone's breaking into your house, Arnold. Wake up! Arnold, who are these guys? They don't seem anything like your friends. Congratulations, Arnie. Somehow you've gotten yourself into what looks like pretty big trouble. Again. What the jumping Jiminy is this place? Looks like a college dormitory at not the best university. Wow, Arnold. Looks like you could be a superstar in a new reality series. How on earth did they get a file on all of you guys? Whoopsie daisy, I guess they got you here by mistake. What do they want from all of you? Uh-oh, I don't like this at all. Arnold, haven't you been able to sleep? A day without sleep leads to headaches. Your hearing becomes noisy and difficult. And your memory becomes impaired. Believe that on average, a person can endure no more than five days without sleep. That's when the real oh. test begins. Oh. Optical and oh. oh. begin to You're the only one left, Arnie old pal. I'm reminded of one legend about Soviet scientists. They put five people in a room for 15 days with a stimulant gas that kept them all awake. Arnold, you're free! I can imagine you probably want to go home and have a good night's sleep. But it seems that you need 30 more days without sleep to get to the nearest town. Well, good luck, Arnold. You're going for a nice little weekend at the spa. You'll take baths full of original Coca-Cola, created according to John Pemberton's recipe from way back in 1886. This pharmacy mixture made of coca extract absorbs quite well in the blood and can create euphoria in particular doses. And in certain doses, it can kill you. When bathing in this drink, your skin will absorb a large amount of benzomethylagonine. Arnold's feeling quite happy and cheerful. At present, the quantity of this ingredient in your blood doesn't exceed 50 milligrams. A dose of 500 milligrams is already toxic, and 1.2 grams will be lethal. Although the euphoria lasts for 30 minutes, you, Arnie, will again and again want to get this feeling back. No, seriously, dude, that's enough for you. Without a new dose of this spa treatment, Arnold will become aggressive and irritable. This substance reduces the amount of dopamine in the brain, and without it, Arnold feels unhappy. Now, all of his energy is devoted to finding more Coca-Cola. Arnie, I like you better the way you were before. Once in the blood, the coca extract raises your body temperature, narrows your blood vessels, and raises your blood pressure. Whoa. Half a year of such daily cola baths, Arnie, and you'll be burning up from within. Well, you lived a sweet but really short life. This is something to ponder, isn't it? Hey, Lunkhead, I hope you're not looking for Mentos. So, according to the terms of the challenge, you're supposed to replace water with cola. And why are you looking so smug? Watch out, Arnie! Incoming! One can of cola contains 10 teaspoons of sugar. That's your total recommended daily allowance all at once. With so much sugar at one time, the body should respond with vomiting. But orthophosphoric acid absorbs most of the taste and everything stays safely inside. Your brain is easy to trick, but it's more difficult to fool your body. The liver, in order to circumvent this atrocity, turns all the sugar into fat. Arnold's lifespan is reduced by two and a half years for every 10 kilograms he's overweight. So at 100 kilos overweight, you'll lose 25 years off your life. On the other hand, after a couple of years of side effects from diabetes, hypertension, and high cholesterol, you'll have a pretty good chance of dying young and beautiful. Sugar also leaches calcium from bones and teeth, and the effect is enhanced by orthophosphoric acid. Now your bones can be broken from even the slightest impact. The cherry on top will be cancer of the lungs or liver, caused by preservatives that turn ordinary carbonated water into the nectar of the gods, which goes so well with a big juicy burger and fries. And by the way, choose a seat near the toilet. The caffeine in cola has a diuretic effect.
What do we have? Cola. Okay, let's get to work. But first, you need to get rid of all the gas. If the gas contained in the drink gets inside your blood vessels, it'll literally tear you apart from the inside. Cola contains sugar, glucose. This is a perfect source of fast energy and allows you to really perk up. It seems to have worked. The cola has taken root in your body. But your appearance has changed just a little, buddy. Even your hair has changed color. But on the other hand, you'll be a most welcome guest at any children's party. With so much caffeine in the cola running through your veins, you only have to sleep once every three days. Now, you have much more time than regular people. After all, even professional athletes drink cola for a quick dose of energy. And you can always get a refill at the nearest supermarket. No, stop, you kamikaze nutball! Just one single Mentos could turn you into a surface-to-air missile! Don't worry, it won't ruin your day. Cola even helps combat mild depression. But, to be honest, Arnold, cola in your blood is actually deadly. Your eyes, kidneys, nerves, and heart suffer the most. Yeah, looks like cola's not an option. So, what do you say? Let's try Pepsi next time! You look like crap. But it was worth it. You cheered up a lot of people. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead. But you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and 3 points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine! Wake up, uh -huh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it! I never thought I'd say this, but you really had me worried. How are you feeling? Are you speaking Klingon? You became one of those who, after a coma, forgot their native language and began to speak in a completely foreign language. But the fact that you started eating dirt after a coma is something new. Last night, did you finally become a real man? Congratulations, Arnold. This is your first alcohol intoxication. And these are the first unpleasant consequences of a new acquaintance. Arnold, how about a toast to your new friend. Ah, well, I see, of course. If you gotta, you gotta. Oh, Arnold, did you really want to make a lifelong reminder of this event? At least you'll have something to tell your friends about later. As you can see, the consequences of alcohol intoxication don't just damage your health. They damage your bank account, too. Oh, you were unmatched in generosity last night, Arnold. You were the king of the party. Hmm. Now, where's your tooth? Anything ring a bell? Nothing? No? Arnold, you didn't know this, but drinking too much leads to unnecessary aggression. And you certainly paid a price for that. Ooh, you found a solution. Time to take aspirin. Oh, wait, no. You forgot to restock your first aid kit. But really, Arnold, all these troubles are just in your head. Mineral water is a miraculous thing. You're dehydrated. Just need to replenish the missing water from your body. What's with the jacuzzi? I totally understand if you want to quit drinking after last night, but not water. You didn't think it'd be that easy to escape your hangover, did you? Someone call Spielberg. We have a plot for a new Jaws. What is it, Arnold? Are you no, calling an ambulance? Yeah.
Ah, you decided to recharge your strength with delicious pizza. But you forgot about one thing. Booze breath. These are the decay products of ethanol that appear in the body after the liver has taken over its processing. One of them, acetic acid, has a particularly nasty smell. Hey Arnold, you sure you still want to sleep after eating? Sadly, you can forget about sleep. Cerebellar functions are impaired after alcohol intake. As soon as you close your eyes, the cerebellum ceases to have enough data for orientation in space and starts transmitting broken data to the cerebral cortex. Say hello to bed spins. Poor Arnold. It's a pity just to look at you. Let me give you one piece of advice. Right now, a cup of hot tea will save you. Wrap yourself in a warm blanket and fall asleep so soundly that no prince can possibly wake you up with his kiss. Where to start? I suggest the special suicide burger from Burger King. It's got four patties, four slices of cheese, and bacon. Eight? 100 calories. And here comes the Mickey D's french fries. They contain 19 hidden ingredients. Arnold, eat. Are you finished already? Then drink some soda. It's deliberately free here because it wets your appetite. Thankfully, to satisfy your urges, there are already 39,000 McDonald's open in 120 countries around the world. And in the UK, recycled oil from french fries even fuels trucks. Over the past 20 years, the number of overweight people in the world has tripled. You better stop, Arnold, because with a diet like this, you'll gain 10% of your body weight per month. And this will lead to... Arnold, stop already! You now have type 2 diabetes. You're depressed and your blood vessels are chock full of fat. And this could easily cause you to suffer a heart attack. Fast food is extremely high calorie and is practically devoid of vitamins and minerals. My advice, you need to urgently switch to healthy food cooked at home. Otherwise, you're in big trouble. There you go. Good for you, Arnold. How about I'm going to visit you for dinner tonight? O-M-G! Arnold! What in tarnation did you make? Roasted piglet! Chocolate caramel cake! That's not what I meant! It's not just about not eating fast food, buddy. It's about any kind of high-calorie food, and you're overeating. Get ready, Arnold. A new experiment awaits you. A bathtub full of boiling hot water. Stop watching Netflix and stop texting Susie. She's not going to answer you anyway. Come on. No way. Are you finally going to meet her? Ha <laughs> ha. What a maroon. You're seriously depressed, buddy. The World Health Organization estimates that depression affects 300 million people worldwide. That's about 4% of the global population. Depression occurs due to a deficit of neurotransmitters in the brain, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Without these natural chemicals, favorite activities stop being pleasurable and colors turn gray. And all of this can end very tragically. So just don't do something stupid, Arnie. Arnold, you have millions of fans on YouTube. Why do you need all this? Come to me, buddy. I'll give you a big hug. Depression isn't just a change in mood. It's a real illness. To treat it, you most definitely need to consult a doctor, preferably a psychiatrist. Antidepressants can help you, but be careful. Some are addictive. Start going to the gym. Believe it or not, exercise is one of the best ways to reduce symptoms of depression. And change your diet. Eat more dark chocolate, seafood, nuts, and fruits. Meet with your friends. You can get a pet and take it for walks in the park. Now that everything's stabilized in your nervous system and your hormones of happiness have returned to normal levels, the world sparkles with new colors. And now that you're in better physical shape, you've recovered well by soothing your grief with ice cream. I'm sure we can use this for today's topic. Let's see how much weight you can gain. Put simply, 
To gain extra pounds, you must constantly increase the number of calories you eat. With your weight and lazy lifestyle, it will be enough for you to eat six Snicker bars a day to start gaining excess weight. When you reach 300 kilograms, the Snickers allotment should be 14 bars a day. And when you reach 2,000 kilograms, you'll have to eat, 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 and eat again until you eat 17,000 calories of food a day. No one has ever reached such a mass. 2,000 kilograms would simply destroy your body. Fat would compress your organs and veins. You would begin to suffocate. Your strongest bones, which are four times stronger than concrete, would break if you tried to stand on your feet. At this way, you can live for just a few seconds until the fat completely strangles you. So let's suck out a little bit. It seems you're going to need to borrow a bra from your mom. The more fat in a person's body, the more intensively female hormones are produced. Your breasts grow enlarged, your voice becomes thin, and your little friend no longer rises in the morning to salute the new day. Hmm, that's a twist. Looks like Lolita97 has a very jealous husband. Don't go leaning out and trying to lose weight. There's enough fat in your body to sit in a closet without food for three years. You just need to inject some vitamins and drink water. Ah, never mind. Get dressed, Arnie, because with a body like yours, we could lose our entire female audience. Looking for similarities between you and Schwarzenegger. You have one at least, and that's your names. You're going to have to start working out if you want to have a body like his. And also give up on your usual diet. Or do you maybe have some other options? Arnold, are you serious? Steroids! First off, it's illegal. And secondly, I repeat this, it's illegal. Using steroids means you don't even have to exercise in order to gain weight. Of course, consuming so much testosterone will increase your libido. You'll want more physical attention almost immediately. Hey, Arnold, come on. That's just too much. So, you decided to upload your photos to a dating app. Congratulations, you got a match. Judging by her photos, you have a lot in common. How are you going to surprise her on your first date? Great, Arnold. You two are definitely made for each other. Good morning, Arnold. I see you didn't wake up alone. What? Are you scared, Arnold? I forgot to tell you, testosterone affects women in its own special way. They get facial hair like men, and their voice becomes deeper and rougher. But don't rush out like that. It's dangerous, because your heart is not as good as it used to be. Now you can easily have a heart attack. But the worst thing is that even giving up testosterone completely won't get rid of the consequences. You'll become fat and mentally unstable. Yes, Arnold, in the end, the situation is even worse than when you started. The brain works much better when it receives a lot of nutrients. This can be achieved through more rapid circulation of the blood. A shot of adrenaline will increase your heart rate to 220 beats per minute. And a 40th cup of coffee will provide all 350. Let's see if we've nourished your brain enough. <laughs> well... But what if we make your heart contract at a speed of 300,000 times per second? Blood will run through your veins 20 times faster than the speed of sound. Obviously, all your veins and blood vessels will burst instantly, and your heart won't even be able to contract a second time. So, we'll do an upgrade. We'll replace your heart with a motor and we'll make your blood more viscous. Now, this is a whole different story. In this form, you are a superman. All processes of the body are accelerated thousands of times. It will be the most productive time of your life. With such a brain, you could create a company more successful than Google or refine Einstein's theory of gravity, advancing humanity hundreds of years ahead. But because of your accelerated metabolism, you'll have to spend all your time on the toilet. But 
Don't worry, it won't last for long. Your body can only withstand a maximum of two hours of such stress and strain. And then, bam! Arnold! What? You broke the record? How? You glued your eyelids! Oh my god, it's really dangerous! Blinking is necessary to lubricate your eyes with moisture. Our lacrimal glands contain antibodies, lysozymes, and electrolytes. Without them, your eyes will become defenseless. So, I'm afraid you won't be able to admire your literacy for long. The smallest particles in the air will begin to settle on the eyes and scratch them. In addition, the longer you don't blink, the more you want to. Bright light hurts you. Your vision gets worse. These are signs of conjunctivitis. It needs to be treated properly. It sure won't go away by itself. Be careful when reading the drug instructions, Arnold. With Vision of Plus 5, it's very difficult to read up close. But with myopia at negative 5, you'll have problems with viewing objects in the distance. Ladies, stop it! He didn't see anything! Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! Looks like you got beat up by the pharmacy security and you lost all your belongings. I wouldn't stay in such unsanitary conditions for long. Don't have the strength to go. Eerie similarity to the symptoms of adenoviral conjunctivitis. This happens when the retina is torn and the virus penetrates through it. Arnold, get up! You'll develop abscesses. Yes, Arnie, it's all yours, but on one condition. You have to eat everything. To make the experiment work, choose the right products. Mmm, chocolate cake and meat. After eating such a large quantity of food, you'll start to feel a little sleepy. Sweet dreams, Arnie. The truth is, most likely, you'll wake up in the middle of the night with a terrible stomach ache. Your stomach lining is stretching and expanding. Good morning, Arnold. We made breakfast for you. The more you eat, the harder it is for you to move. And as a result, you don't burn as many calories. It's a pity there aren't any wheels on your chair, right, Arnie? After a couple of months, you'll become big and important. Your granny would be proud of you. What? Does your heart hurt? Are you feeling short of breath? That's totally okay. High blood pressure and heart disease are perfectly normal with obesity. Don't be sad. You can become a superstar sumo wrestler. Sports are gonna save you. Meet the Cake Punisher and Elevator Annihilator. Yusako Fatoaso. Are you ready? Fight! Arnold! 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 Why are you shaking like that? Is this rage? I think I understand. Your huge stomach has started to press on your lungs and you can't breathe. No, don't die. What about that last little piece of donut? Where'd you go, Arnold? You want to travel to the center of the earth again? Three, two, one, stop! <laughs> Arnold, did you pee your pants? It takes 0.4 seconds for the heart to contract and the same to rest. If you add up all the pauses in an average person's life, it turns out that the heart is resting for more than 20 years. Therefore, no one will notice a little pause for just a single nanosecond. But I already figured out how to fix it. Look closely. The heart resembles a two-story house. There are two rooms at the top called the right and left atria and below the ventricles. In its normal mode, the blood from the atrium is pushed into the ventricle with such such pressure that the blood could hypothetically shoot out for more than 9 meters or almost 30 feet. Then the ventricle pushes blood into the lungs or the aorta and life goes on as usual. But if the ventricle stops for at least 0.7 seconds when all the other parts of the heart are still working, then boom, the amount of blood going through doubles and it's torn to shreds. Not this time, Arnold. We need you, Arnold. Everybody loves you, right people? I'm kidding. Nobody cares. It seems that he's about to be robbed by a homeless bum. Or rather, he could be robbed if this lazy lunkhead at least had some money. Thank God. I was scared he was going to steal my camera. Let's see what's wrong with him. If he would have brushed his teeth even once, he would have definitely noticed he has an ulcer that hasn't healed for several weeks. This is a very alarming signal, and I know what to look for. Cancer. 
Even the frailest body creates millions of cells every day. But sometimes a bug occurs, a mutant is born, a cell that's different from the others. But it tries to hide this fact as much as it possibly can. If you have a healthy body, your immune system will easily detect this wayward cell. But if your body is engaged in constantly trying to treat itself, then it has no energy left to fight the cancer. Do you want one for yourself, Arnold? Easy. If your parents had cancer, then there's a 10% chance you'll get it too. No? A mutation can also be caused by radiation. For example, visiting the Chernobyl nuclear power plant without protection. Or living for a thousand days on the International Space Station. You could also smoke six cigarettes a day. Or eat two kilograms of smoked meat for ten years. You won't even have time to blink, as this cell will turn into a huge cancerous tumor. Look, the food inside of him can't even get to the stomach. Mutated cells make their way into the bloodstream and then spread throughout the body, into the liver, the lungs, and the brain. It's time to apply poison. Chemotherapy doesn't cure cancer. It kills it. But healthy cells also have to die along with the cancer. Arnold, get out of there! Hello, Arnold. Today you're going to fish on the banks of Sentinel Island. But don't you dare set foot on land. Arnold! Congratulations. You're now in the clutches of the wildest and most hostile tribe in the world. And they don't like guests very much. I'm afraid they're going to eat you. From your skin, they can make eight drums. From your veins, five bows. And from your empty skull, a big mug. And your scalp is going to decorate the chief's body. Arnold, where are you going? Wow, I didn't think aliens really existed. These guys are going to do something really useful with your body. Your body consists of 70% water, 24% organic matter, and 6% inorganic substances. In a cucumber, there's also a lot of water, about 85 to 90%. So technically, you're a very emotional cucumber. From the remaining 6% of inorganic elements, many useful things can be created. In your body, there's enough iron to make a nail 6 centimeters long. Your body also contains enough copper to make a pair of headphones. And all of this while you still remain alive. You can even remove most of your internal organs and still go on living. The human body seems fragile, but you can live even without your stomach, spleen, 75% of your liver, 80% of your intestines, one kidney, one lung, and almost every organ located in your pelvis and your inguinal cavity. Of course, you'll hardly be like a cucumber, but it won't kill you. And you will have those free headphones of somewhat dubious quality. But these are all useless things. In fact, the composition of your body includes carbon, hydrogen, sodium, and oxygen. All these chemical elements are also part of dynamite. The hidden explosive power of the human body is equal to 175 grams of TNT. In fact, the strength of the explosion will be in direct proportion to how much you like salty foods during your life. Hey, Arnie, now you'll be eating only raw meat like a carnivore. Can you feel how quickly your levels of adrenaline and aggression are rising? Of course, it'll be a little difficult for you to chew, as human teeth aren't adapted to eating raw meat. Better cut it into small pieces, like the ancient Mongols did. In fact, the most famous dish made of raw meat, steak tartare, is named after them. Without cereals, vegetables, and fruits, the flow of glucose, which is fuel for your body, will stop. Your liver will start to process its fat stores to meet your body's energy needs, and you'll start to lose weight, up to 5 kilograms a week. Your muscles will start to dehydrate and dry out. That's why a meat diet is so popular among Hollywood celebrities and supermodels. Cholesterol levels in your blood will go up, and, well, let's face it, you'll be at increased risk of heart disease. Amino acids will fill your intestines, and they'll mix with bacteria from your skin, and that will lead to a super grungy body odor. Raw meat does contain some dangerous microorganisms, such as E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. And they can cause you to suffer from diarrhea, vomiting, and just general old heaviness in your stomach. But when your body finally adapts to such food, you'll feel a surge in energy and physical strength. The reason for this is increased testosterone and vitamin D levels. Even Bruce Lee himself, when preparing for fights, liked to have a tall glass of yummy fresh meat smoothie.
Our ancient ancestors used to eat raw meat, but their lives changed forever when they figured out how to use fire and began cooking. Arnold, what's wrong with you? Does your tummy ache? This is the perfect chance to test my quantum resizer and find out from the inside what's hurting you. Put this helmet on and I'll connect your consciousness to your nano copy and insert you into your own body. But first take off your underpants. It's the fastest way to get you to your destination. Here we go! You ate a burrito which contained the eggs of some very smart tapeworms. Arnold, just look at this. They built a whole metropolis inside of you. They even built a zoo. Let's check out the zoo. Today's Monday, so there's a 50% discount. My God, this is a zoo of pathogenic viruses and bacteria. I admire your interlopers. Spanish flu, plague, Ebola, tuberculosis, swine and bird flu, and a bunch of other rare pathogens all in one place. Look, there's even my favorite, the little studied baronavirus, also known as sad horse disease. It mainly affects horses, cows, rabbits, and other animals. Arnold, I wouldn't put my fingers in the cage if I were you. It's suspected that the infection causes schizophrenia. Arnold, unfortunately, your stomach hurts due to parasites. Look, they're building a highway in your intestines, a water park in your bladder. If they build a data center in your head, you'll most likely kick the bucket because your head is so small. You need to figure out how to expel them from your body. The sooner, the better. If you open all the cells of this Pandora Zoo, most likely it'll help you expel the worms. Come on, Arnold, go ahead. It's better to cough from a couple of days of Ebola than live with these worms inside of you. Congratulations, Arnold, on the heroic exile of the parasites. I hope your immune system can cope with such a menagerie of diseases. This will be a good lesson for you. And to remember that the five second rule is a bunch of hooey. Meet Arnold. He had a difficult childhood. Now he's making up for lost time. Did you know, Arnold, that there are 15,000 nuclear warheads in the world with a combined capacity of about 7,500 megatons? You should also probably know that five minutes ago, I sent one of them in your direction. There's no point hitting the gas, Arnold. The electromagnetic pulse wave killed all the electronics modern cars are so chock full of. Next, you're gonna be hit by the shock wave. Even if this old rust bucket were made of solid graphene, which at the atomic level is even stronger than diamond, and you somehow miraculously survive all this destruction, you're still gonna go through living hell. Wake your skinny ass up, Arnold. We need to check how far you are from the epicenter of the explosion. Remember, if you see a mushroom cloud, stick your hand out in that direction and raise your thumb. If the cloud is bigger than your thumb, then you're in the radioactive zone. What a lucky guy. Do you have sunscreen? It won't help, you dumbass. I'm joking. You should run away from here. Fast. Radioactive isotopes in small quantities have already begun to slowly destroy your DNA. How do you feel, my friend? Yes, that's right, it's a good time for a shower. Avoiding contact with contaminated items and using special water procedures can increase your chances of survival. Do you have a water filter, Arnold? Even the weakest radiation will result in progressively malignant tumors. Well, congratulations, you got through a nuclear attack and you no longer need a Halloween costume. But this isn't the end. If someone in the world launches a missile with a nuclear warhead, a domino effect will follow. All the nuclear powers of the world will let loose their dogs of war. Then comes the real apocalypse, Arnold. The era of humanity is likely to end. You're gonna die, my friend. It's time to get out of this universe. Arnie, Arnie, wake up. A giant tornado is rushing towards your home. Quickly, run out in the street. You need to get out in the open. Well done. Of course, in order to really save your ass, it would have been a good idea to hide you in the basement of your house. But of course, it's more interesting for me and our viewers to see what will happen to you inside of a tornado. Ready? 
and go. What's inside, Arnie? The width of the funnel of the largest tornadoes can reach 1,500 meters. You'll be there as it turns around. Every year in the United States, about a thousand tornadoes form, and only a few of them are truly gigantic. You're lucky again, Arnie. You're in one of those. I think now it's a good time to discuss low pressure and oxygen discharge. The atmospheric pressure inside a tornado is so low that your lungs cannot extract enough oxygen from the air. And after just a few minutes, you'll pass out and suffocate. Whew! Finally, I was really getting tired of your screams. Such rarefied air is equivalent to climbing Mount Everest without an oxygen tank. Mountain tourism is clearly not for you, Arnie. But inside the tornado, rather than die from lack of oxygen, you'll probably kick the bucket from a collision with other objects dragged inside with you. You know, flying trees, animals, cars, roofs of houses, and even entire houses. Everything that will meet on the path of a super powerful tornado will be drawn inwards and rotated at a speed of up to 500 kilometers an hour. And even if you imagine that by some miracle you can avoid these collisions with all this debris, and if an oxygen tank is no worry and you somehow survive inside the tornado, please don't forget, the tornado's gonna end sooner or later. And so the funnel will let you go and you'll fall from quite a height back to solid ground. That you're definitely not gonna survive, Arnie. Okay, I'll save you again. Why am I doing this? Don't thank me. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no, definitely not this one. Yee, no, not that one. Now this one, this is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of six kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're gonna have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnold, how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state? Good morning, Arnold. What are your plans for today? Hmm, maybe the plan for today is try not to die. Are you scared, Arnold? But what if this is all made up? What if I told you neither King Kong nor Godzilla could survive on Earth? It's pretty simple. Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was 2 meters 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. There 
Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. But what about the fact that there are other giant creatures on Earth, like whales? Well, everything can be easily explained. The density of water is higher than the density of air and is almost equal to a human's density. That's why we can float on the surface of salt water. This means that the habitat itself supports the weight of living things. For example, whales, whose ancestors 50 million years ago looked a lot like a dog with hooves. Godzilla and King Kong could not exist on Earth at all because of our friend gravity. But let's say we turn off gravity to scientifically allow for the existence of Godzilla and King Kong. Everything on Earth that isn't fixed to the ground would take off into space. That includes people who, if caught in the open, will be shot off into the great beyond. And those lucky few who find themselves in a room somewhere can still live for some time until the houses eventually fly upward. And in the end, our planet will completely crumble into pieces. Therefore, in order to destroy the Earth, you don't need to wait for a fight between two giants. You can simply turn off gravity. Meet Arnold. And today, he's made a bet with Elon Musk that he can outrun a Tesla in his regular old internal combustion engine car. Don't worry, Elon is unlikely to reach the finish line. After all, no one took into account that while the race was taking place, Snot and Gob would be arranging a barbecue for themselves. It seems that even the normal temperature of the sun isn't enough to grill their infamous pan-galactic gargle bangers. Ah, now that's much better. Oops. Solar flares like these are not good because they usually disable all the power plants and electrical appliances on the Earth. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it! The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. 
We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow! Just be careful with your finger! Well, at least we survived. Man, the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. The mountain's other name is Chomolungma, and it's the highest point on planet Earth. By the way, just saying, but you owe me $50,000. This is the average price for an expedition up here. To survive at the top, you need top-level equipment. After all, there's very little oxygen, and it's extremely cold. Go down, quickly, at least a kilometer. Hurry up, Arnold, but move as slowly as possible. Oxygen is only one-third the normal here. Try to save your energy. Lack of air causes the brain to misperceive time. Crawling five meters in three hours sounds a little too slow to me. Fortunately, the wind at the top reaches 200 meters per second, and it can help us. You can fly eight kilometers in just three minutes. But be careful, the ledges may get in your way. Lucky you, you fell into the trash. The government pays $2 for every kilogram of garbage collected. I see you're trying to pay me my $50,000 back. Arnold, try not to breathe so much. At a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, your lungs will begin to dry out. Mountain coughs are so bad they can even break your ribs. I'm sorry, Arnold, but climbers can't remove corpses from Mount Everest. It's impossible. Moreover, corpses are used as height markers for mountain peaks. Well, Arnold, at least you found something useful to do. I see you're really happy to be here, buddy, especially after such fiercely cold conditions. Uh, I think perhaps you're enjoying it a little too much. Hello, Arnold. It looks like you started hallucinating from a lack of oxygen, and someone brought you to the campfire. I'm glad that you woke up, but there are still six kilometers ahead of us. Unfortunately, I don't think you have the strength left to reach home. But wait, Arnold, I have an idea. You can repeat the feat of Marco Sifredi. In 2001, he descended Mount Everest on a snowboard. I believe in you, Arnold. Multiple broken bones and the last stages of frostbite. But we reached the Earth! Arnold, it's unbelievable! Come on, shout with me! Hooray! Ah! <laughs> Arnold, I was just kidding! You can't scream in the mountains, it can trigger an avalanche! Don't worry, Arnold, I'm not gonna leave you here. You still owe me $50,000. Arnold, come on, this isn't fair! Okay. I'm going to go get a shovel. Meet Arnold. Today he'll go to the Amazon to get acquainted with the local inhabitants. Which ones? Piranhas! There are about 50 different kinds of piranha, of which only a few eat the flesh of living beings. All other species are either vegetarians or eat only carrion. Arnie, guess what piranhas you're going to meet? My smart boy, you're right! Fortunately for Arnie, and to the disappointment of our viewers, in science there has never been recorded even a single case of piranhas attacking and killing a person. Well then, we're gonna have to create such a case. Arnie, jump in! As you can see, you're absolutely uninteresting to them. And what's more, they're even afraid of you. Aggressiveness in piranhas depends on several factors. The first is heat. Add temperature, please. Thank you. This hell will drive anyone crazy. During a drought, the water level in the river drops and finding food becomes much more difficult. This leads to a second huge factor, hunger. Starving piranhas are ready to eat even their sick, weak relatives. And where does that leave you, Artie? The third factor that affects their aggressiveness is the need to protect their brood. Mom and dad don't like it when their kids are disturbed. Add a small bloody cut as an appetizer, and you, Arnie, are ready to meet the piranhas. The structure of their jaws allows them to tear out large chunks of meat from their prey. Razor-sharp teeth, four to five millimeters long, can bite through tendons and even small bones. Arnie, you can forget about your fingers and toes. 
In just a few minutes, you'll have a perfectly clean skeleton. One of the largest representatives of piranhas weighs up to one kilogram. But how big should the jaws be so that they can eat Arnold, including all of his bones? Let's increase the size of the piranha teeth by six times. Such teeth can easily cut the bones into tiny little fragments. Piranhas are the janitors of the rivers, Arnie. They leave absolutely nothing to rot at the bottom of the Amazon. Well, that is, except for hair. Even fish think your hair is stupid, Arnie. Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future. Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes. He needs your help. That's why you're going to the year 2050. Oh dear, that's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier. You just need to figure out the controls. Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. Arnold, look out! A rocket! Arnold! Arnold! Are you okay? Arnold, you were seriously injured. So the doctors gave you some upgrades. Almost as good as new. But there is a problem. Now we need a soldier without implants, and you need to travel back in time and find him. And here's your volunteer. Get him into the portal. Hmm, deja vu. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Meet Arnold. He's now a Transylvanian delicacy stuffed with rice. Sorry, Arnold, I'm not a big fan of such gory scenarios. So let's take a look at some interesting information. Let's wish Arnold's new friends a big bon appetit. Now, we should probably get to know them a little better. So, werewolves are called lycanthropes. That's the name they got from ancient Greece. The author of the term is Herodotus, a historian from 2,500 years ago, who, when describing Scythia, mentioned people who could instantly turn into wolves. As for vampires, the word vampire first appeared in the Oxford English Dictionary back in 1734. <gasps> Arnold, you're alive! I'm so happy! But wait, what's that on your neck? No! You gotta be kidding me! You're actually the first person ever to get bitten by both a vampire and a werewolf at the same time! I'm already wondering just what the heck you're gonna look like. Well, you try to figure out how that's gonna work. Moreover, back in medieval times, redheads were considered vampires. Ooh, Frankie has already added you to his friend list. That's sweet. He's also assembled from a bunch of random crap, just like you. Everyone knows about the ancient animosity that exists between vampires and werewolves, but I would have never guessed that I'd see such a thing in a single body. Oh, so you're getting hungry now. 
And you need food for two. Go, search for your victim. The perfect victim. Bon appetit, Arnie. Wait, Arnold, where are you? What did you expect? You can't go against the call of the wild. Just remember to clean up after your dog. Way to be a bloodsucker. With your moves, Arnold, you need to start thinking about going vegan. Ooh, I forgot to warn you. A double creature gets a double hunt. You need to put aside your differences, because you've got common enemies now. Prayer ain't gonna help you, buddy. And of course, garlic is deadly to you now, you moron. You're not the first victim of the hunt. In the 16th century, the French parliament passed a law to exterminate all shapeshifters. As a result, from 1520 to 1630, more than 30,000 people were killed in France who were thought to be werewolves. Lucky you, Arnold. The guys from Greenpeace are always on the lookout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You decided to visit the Paleo History Museum. It's really cool here. Even Orochimaru from Naruto is here. I heard he knows secrets of resurrection. He can bring dead things back to life. What the heck? No. <laughs> He's using it on the dinosaurs. <gasps> Run, you dang fool. Dinosaurs are very dangerous. Whether it's herbivores, carnivores, or even those radical dinosaurs, they're insanely angry. And you would be too if you hadn't eaten in 66 million years. Furthermore, the dinosaurs are getting even angrier now that they see what happened to their descendants over the course of evolution. Dinosaurs reigned on Earth for 160 million years, but the fall of a meteorite changed the course of evolution and allowed for the development of our ancestors' mammals. Now, only the strongest will survive. But what in tarnation's going on now? Wait. I think I get it. Over the last 66 million years, the Earth's climate has gotten colder and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has changed. It looks like dinosaurs can't live here anymore and are gonna die out once again. Hmm, what to do? In theory, we could build a Jurassic Park. We'll feed them and artificially maintain the climate. This place could be the most profitable tourist spot in the world. And we'll also be a global supplier of eggs and manure. Dino poop. But then again, an ordinary dinosaur eats a ton of grass a day or more than 100 kilograms of meat. More than likely, the dinosaurs will eat all the fauna in the park and then probably start eating each other until they die out again. No matter how you slice it, the dinosaurs just aren't going to be able to live in our time. Do you really want to save them, Arnie? The only option is to send the dinosaurs back to the past, to their perfect world. Time to say goodbye, Arnie. At least there, you know they're going to be better off. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. Here she is. Wow, what did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh, how did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie, it has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you gonna do? Wow, now that, that, that's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way, that's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's gonna kick some butt. Yikes, this is kind of brutal even by my low standards, but very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch, this is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. 
Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. <gasps> Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80-proof potion. Looks like you're gonna have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not going to be taken down so easily. Arnie, you're the only one left. Arnie, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there's no enemy but yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. You were a nice guy. Ooh, now I see. What a twist. Arnold, I congratulate you. Now that you're finally getting married, though to a zombie. Although, you're a zombie yourself. But what's the difference? Even zombies can love too. Today, you're going to become one of the few who visited the surface of a lava lake and the only one to get out of there alive. Although, all bets are off with your luck, Arnie. All right then. Three, two, one. Open your eyes or you'll miss everything. You only have one nanosecond. You're in Africa at 613 meters above sea level in the vent of the seething volcano Erta Ale. Impressive. Ain't it? The air temperature at the surface of the fire lake reaches 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt cast iron. Hey, chill out, Arnold. In one nanosecond, nothing's going to happen, even with you. I mean, if you really run out of luck and stay there longer, your lungs will burst into flames at your first breath. Your skin will peel off. The only sensible course of action will be to plunge into the lava lake completely so that you pass out due to a pain shock and, within 90 seconds, wake up in a better place. Not much of a prospect, huh? So stay put, bud, and... Arnold, take your finger out of the lava. Oh, great. What now, Arnie? Want me to teleport you to the summit so you can enjoy the view? Earth 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive. Because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity. And that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just going to have to figure out how to survive on your own. Water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there, and you can take up farming. 
You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs, build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. Wake up, Arnold. Megalodon has swallowed you. Knock, knock, Arnold. Follow the white rabbit. Megalodon is a shark of the family Otodontidae, 50 feet long and 88,000 pounds in weight. This is the most dangerous hunter of the sea depths, located at the very top of the food chain. Megalodons feed on small whales, which, however, surpass them in size. Not possessing either high speed or endurance, megalodons ram their victims, trying to break their bones and damage vital organs, such as the heart and lungs. Megalodon has 276 teeth, arranged in five rows, the largest of them reaching 19 centimeters long. This is three times more than those of the great white. Megalodon's jaw is two meters high, two and a half meters wide, and has a bite force reaching 100 kilonewtons. That's nine times greater than a great white shark, and allows Megalodon to even snap the spines of small whales. Meet Arnold, and he is hungry. Arnold, look, it's you from the future. Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes. He needs your help. That's why you're going to the year 20... Oh, dear. That's not the bright... ...sure people are thinking about. Indeed, by 20... The Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown. Over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the... ...of destruction, and they're fighting over... Over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold. Remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! Arnold! Arnold! Are you okay? Arnold, you were seriously injured. So the doctors gave you some upgrades. Almost as good as new. But there is a problem. Now we need a soldier without implants, and you need to travel back in time and find him. 
And here's your volunteer. Get him into the portal. Hmm, deja vu. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Hello, Arnold. Hey, when did you manage to get to the seaside? So, what's the whole beach set for anyway? Ah, is this to get Bertha's attention? Wow, it actually worked. She invited you to visit her. But, hey, buddy, do you have enough money for a ticket? I have an idea. You can fly to Bertha in extra super duper economy class. And instead of the usual tablet and pillow, you're gonna need food, water, and a porta potty. Don't worry, Arnold. You're not the first one to travel like this. Reginald Reg Spears, without any money, got all the way to another continent in just three days. Nowadays, warehouses are like cities with their own laws and regulations. The probability of losing a package is reduced to a minimum. Robots work on the conveyors by reading special barcodes. This reduces the risk of human error. In 2019, China set a world delivery record with 345 million packages delivered in just one day. The worst thing that can happen to a package is that it can get detained in a port at customs. I agree. For the person inside, this ain't like staying at the Ritz. Finding yourself in a confined space under the blazing hot sun is a difficult task to endure. Arnold, hang on, little buddy. It's just a little longer now. To be precise, 23 days, 17 hours, and 45 minutes. Welcome to Australia, Arnold. One of the benefits of traveling by package is courier delivery right to the final destination point. Bertha will be here any minute. Wow, what a babe. Arnold, are you ready? Good look for you, Arnold. She definitely won't forget you like that. Hey, Arnold. Decided to hang out in the park, did you? Looks like this burrito was out of your league. Quick, find something to drink. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or... Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected. It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly, but you will lag behind in progress and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Oh, Arnold, you came back just in time. The sun is dying and turning into a supernova, and you got the best seat to see the death of our solar system. Say goodbye to planet Earth. I guess that burrito was a mistake. Okay. 
Kay Arnold. Oh. I built a machine that makes things invisible for 24 hours. There are three possible approaches to invisibility. The first is perfect transparency, which sadly we cannot achieve. The second okay. is camouflage. When the light rays emanating from the object correspond to the rays that we would expect to see in the absence of the object. This is exactly what my machine does. And the third and last approach is when an object is swathed in a metamaterial, something like an invisible hat that transforms the path of light rays so that they seem unchanged. Okay, I'm throwing the first switch. Did you know that the first three-dimensional invisibility was achieved by a group from the University of California, Berkeley in 2008? They created a mesh of silver microfibers that doesn't reflect or absorb light rays. As a result, the eye sees light only from the objects behind the camouflaged entity. Now the second switch. Don't move, Arnold. Wait, what are you? Oh, you are such an imbecile. I'd smack you upside your head, but damn it, I don't know where you are. Put this hat on so I can see you. Okay, you have 24 hours. What are you gonna do? Who'd have any doubt that's where you'd go first? If my machine worked according to the principle of invisibility, you'd become blind because the invisible body's refractive index becomes equal to that of air, and the lenses in your eyes would lose the ability to reflect light rays and focus them on the retina. The retina itself also wouldn't be able to absorb visible light with its rods and cones due to its invisibility. But as I can see, your eyesight seems to be okay, you slobbering ignoramus. Okay, now that the gym is closing, can we do something else? You have 18 hours left. I meant something a little more significant, you block-headed jerk monkey. After all, you could reveal terrible uh. secrets and perform incredible feats. You could even make your way into Area 51. Oh, right, it's in a different state. Do you have any ideas? Are you thinking about stealing it? That's a terrible idea. In any case, you need a plan. Of course, thanks to invisibility, you'll be able to stay long after closing, but then you'll need to bypass the guards. And there are also lasers all around the diamond. Can you really do a triple somersault, steal the diamond, and leave the museum in the car that will bring new antiquities for the exposition exactly at 2 a.m.? Even so, this is a really bad idea. The museum closes in an hour. Go hide in the corner and wait. And take off your hat, you mutton-headed twit. Get ready, Arnold. The main thing, obviously, is not to get caught. Arnold, it's go time! Aw, oh, nuts! All you had to do was a triple somersault, and you screwed it up again. <sighs> well, now, now you have to run for your life, Arnold! The exit is just around the corner. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Damn, looks like you stole a glass copy of the diamond. Well, I gotta say this is an unfortunate turn of events. Although, to be honest, it's pretty logical that the original would be kept in a safe. Now you'll never have the love of the beautiful Tugai. Unfortunately, you're gonna become visible in just about an hour or so. So, good luck escaping. Bye-bye, Arnold. Meet Arnold. And today, he's made a bet with Elon Musk that he can outrun a Tesla in his regular old internal combustion engine car. Don't worry, Elon is unlikely to reach the finish line. After all, no one took into account that while the race was taking place, Snot and Gob would be arranging a barbecue for themselves. It seems that even the normal temperature of the sun isn't enough to grill their infamous pan-galactic gargle bangers. Ah, now that's much better. Oops. Solar flares like these are not good because they usually disable all the power plants and electrical appliances on the Earth. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. 
The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it! The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow, just be careful with your finger. Well, at least we survived. Man, the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. See you in the next episode! Meet Gertrude and Arnold. This little piggy is a little smarter than Arnold. And no, not because it has a Neuralink chip in its brain, but because she came here by bus, unlike our red-headed fool who parked his car with the Mafia for $50 an hour. At this conference, Elon Musk will demonstrate the process of installing an advanced microchip into the brain of these cute little monkeys, and in the near future, into the brain of a person. Arnold, stop teasing the primates with your keys. See? Great. Well, you had it coming, buddy. I don't understand how Elon could have invited such a doofus to his conference. From a scientific point of view, Neuralink is a fairly simple device. It's a set of electrodes that transmit electrical impulses from neurons in the brain to a computer. But from a technical point of view, it's an astonishingly complex device. Imagine that the brain is a big ball of extraordinarily tangled wires, and you need to carefully connect to it without damaging anything. Arnold, run! It's time to pay for parking or a tow truck truck is going to take your car. We need to get the keys from the chimpanzees as soon as possible. Who, with parking prices like these, you're going to have to live on dollar store ramen till the end of the month. Get in the monkey suit. You'll have better luck this way, trust me. I know it smells like butt cheese, but it's only for five minutes. One more time, Arnold. You can do it. Hey, dudes, where are you taking Arnold? Only I'm allowed to experiment on him. Elon, please be gentle with Arnold. But really, who am I talking to? I'm just a voice in the head of this dumbass. Arnold's brain is almost the same size as that of a primate, and this version of the chip will suit him perfectly. Thanks to Neuralink and Wi-Fi, Arnold can now communicate with other owners of this device via the power of thought. He also benefits from a tremendous increase in the speed of interaction with the Internet. Arnold, come on, 
concentrate, you can do it. Download Monkey Sign Language from the internet. I never doubted that you'd succeed, Arnold. But I didn't think you'd drag it out for a whole day. I thought you were so stupid that even the Neuralink chip couldn't help you. But you just forgot to turn it on, you moron. Get ready, we're taking the bus back with Gertrude. Your car was sold to pay the parking fees. They got 600 bucks for it. Hello, Arnold. You've been teleported a lot during our science show, but did you ever wonder how the teleporter works? There are several ways to travel through time. Let's start with wormholes. Where have you been dreaming of going? To Australia? No problem, get in. A wormhole is a tunnel through the space-time continuum that theoretically could send you to any point in the universe in just a few seconds. But time is relative, Arnie, and it might take just a few seconds for you, but on Earth, decades could pass. Congratulations, Arnie. You're in Australia in the year 2050. It's a little uncomfortable, yeah? And what if you needed to move around at the same time? Quantum teleportation can help in this matter. Your body consists of a hundred trillion cells, which in turn consists of a hundred trillion atoms each. And each atom contains tiny pinpoint particles, quanta, which could help you teleport over huge distances. It would be great to find someone who could help you build a quantum teleporter. Well, look who's here, Rick and Morty. Arnie, take their drawings. With their help, you could create a device for instantaneous movement anywhere in the universe and even into alternate universes. Now, when the teleporter's ready, climb into the box and make sure there's no one else inside. Well, so long, Arnold. In quantum teleportation, the original body dies and a duplicate is created at the destination point. No big loss in your case. Wow! I told you, during teleport, you need to be alone inside the booth. Don't touch anything in the laboratory. What have you done? Your DNA, which was hybridized with that of a scorpion, was transmitted through the satellite system and turned all the inhabitants of the planet into human-scorpion hybrids. You've destroyed Dimension C-137, you stupid idiot, Arnie. Rick and Morty would have traveled back to the original universe, where the mutants don't exist, but you can only do it a couple of times. I don't think we want to see what happens to Arnie in this universe. Better we go back to Australia. Fortunately, I saved Arnold's quantum data, and therefore have the ability to recover his useless body. Arnie, you should crawl through the wormhole in the direction of your home in 2018. And don't forget the blueprints of your body. It seems now we know how humanity will create a teleporter in 2050. He's already packed his stuff, fed his fish, and is ready to go on a top secret journey. Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean. I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're going to shoot the explosion on it, and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter. Or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here, fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. 
The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! What a trip that turned out to be. Hmm. I think you may need a visit to the oncologist. Arnold, do you know just how nincompoopian you look right now? I wonder who took your protective suit. Hmm. Hey, Arnie, are you sure it's okay to take pictures here? Arnold, I have bad news. All governments all around the world have been overthrown, and they're now each ruled by dictators. Yes, on the one hand, it's good. No one will leave their countries anymore, and everyone will work for their country's well-being and standing in the world. But on the other hand, under such regimes, most people won't live in houses or residential complexes, but in prisons, because the laws of the countries will be very strict and sometimes even really strange. You can forget about the benefits of civilization. After all, foreign economic relations aren't needed anymore, and each country will now work just for itself. But what that means is if before there wasn't any heavy industry in your country, like, for example, making vehicles, now you won't be able to get a new car, and all you can ever hope for is some crappy bicycle at best. And I'm not saying that all social media has disappeared, but now you can only have private conversations with your friends somewhere deep in the woods and with the radio turned up really loud and now even if you want a haircut your hairstyle will need to get an approval from the local administration and there are just a limited number of government approved hairdos but what's most frightening is that all countries now suspect each other of being a potential threat so almost all resources of every country are invested in military buildups. And alas, one of these days, somebody's gonna break down and hit that big red button. Arnold, you saved the world! Who would have thought your colorblindness would save the planet? Hey, where'd you get a car? Arnold! You almost killed that bird! Now you have to call a taxi for this lady. Luckily, it was a sparrow and not an eagle. I think your phone just ordered all of the taxis in the entire United States to one place. In the USA, about 230,000 people are registered as taxi drivers, more than half of whom are Uber drivers. All these cars lined up in a row will create a traffic jam with a length of 800 kilometers. One third of New York State will be paralyzed. It'll become difficult to breathe on the streets due to emissions increasing to double the usual amount. And because of that, you'll start coughing, feel nauseous, and might even suffer a stroke. Don't place your hopes on an ambulance, since it can't save you, or the other 3,000 patients who call an ambulance every day. You can take a chance and try to take the subway to the hospital, but the 6 million people who normally drive their cars are already on the subway. So today, there are about 11 million evil, angry, late people down there. Hey, he's the one who caused all the traffic jams! Criminals have already robbed half of the shops in the city because police can't respond to most crimes. Arnold, I think you'd better get out of the country altogether. There's a place for you on just about any plane leaving New York. People can't get to the airport and planes are flying half empty. And from this company are losing more than $10,000 per flight. Does an Arnold always pay his debts? All the taxi drivers together spent about $15 million just on gas to come pick you up. How in the world will you pay? Arnold, do you really have the money? Hey, Arnold, did you actually lose your job as a pizza delivery guy? Now, just imagine if you had two heads. You'd be way more popular. Your life would be much more interesting. You'd be smarter. And you could finally learn how to ride a bike normally. Look, this is the same guy from the sign. The circus ringmaster. Oh my god. Did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's gonna happen now? 
Is the big show of the season canceled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good as new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which after transplantation even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace these beautiful heads. You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more, and is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. Psst, Arnold, Arnold, wake up. Meet Arnold. And again, he got into trouble. Arnold, don't be such an idiot. You have a billionaire president right in front of you. You can ask him for anything. And by the way, what did you ask for? It's a shame that this time Trump is the one mocking you and not me. Because now you're going to replace him for an entire day. Why will it be a mockery? Just look at what he eats. Chips, burgers, rivers of cola. You'll kick the bucket before the end of the day. After eating Egg McMuffins and cola for breakfast, you're going to have a meeting with the security services. Sign some documents and, well, ah oh hell, screw this. Let's go have some fun around the city. You're now waiting for the presidential motorcade. These are 12 identical bulletproof cars that can withstand the explosion of a bomb. You have the ability to contact any of the leaders of the whole world. So Putin's inviting you to the bathhouse again. That's a big A plus, Arnold. And we can drive right up. It's lunchtime and a big pizza's waiting for you. Smothered in ketchup and chocolate milkshake. This is kind of boring. Maybe we should declare a state of emergency. Or I know, we could troll Kim Jong-un. Maybe we should endorse a law like every American citizen must be subscribed to Meet Arnold. Home sweet home. For dinner, we have chicken legs from KFC and of course, more cola. Something tells me that Trump eats this way just for the image, but in reality... Oh, so that's why he takes an annual salary of just one dollar. You asked for his salary as a reward. You're such a maroon. So, you got your dollar, but you have to pay taxes for the whole $400,000.
which is Trump's original salary, although he gives that away to federal agencies. So, Arnold, which kidney are you going to sell? Arnold, something unexpected has happened. Do you remember the movie The Devil's Double? The one where a rich boy forcibly turns another person into his double and then sends the clone instead of himself to dangerous meetings and stuff like that. So, yeah, we need you to help out one of my acquaintances. You'll replace Kim Jong-un for a day. Can you even imagine ruling a country with a population of 25 million people that obey, adore, and extol you, and only you? But, to be frank, they don't have a choice in the matter. Many things that most people see as normal over here are only allowed for you over there. For example, wearing clothes from the best European designers or eating Nutella. While you're engaged in important state affairs, your huge house is guarded by a platoon of armed soldiers, an electric fence, and a minefield. Even a nuclear explosion will be repelled by its walls, which are covered with lead rods. Your personal armored train starts its journey straight from this house. Its speed doesn't exceed 60 kilometers per hour due to the enormous weight of the cars, which are sheathed with armored plates. Just for today, all of this is in your possession. The harvest this year was quite unsuccessful, as you can see, and 10 million people may die from hunger, sure, but 15 million more will still remain. Guys, you'd better not go in there for about 20 minutes. Okay, fine, if that's for the state's security. Only the president can use the mobile toilet. All urine and stool samples are collected to monitor your health and make sure that no spy, God forbid, finds out about your illnesses. The best room in the whole city was rented just for you. And after leaving, no one will even think that the president stayed here. The security service doesn't leave a single fingerprint or hair from the glorious ruler. Everyone's already waiting for you. Say nothing. Just smile and wave your hand. I just knew that the U.S. president wouldn't send a meeting invitation on WhatsApp. Hello, Arnold. Are you waiting for your friends? Hmm, my friends don't act like that. Arnold, what have you done this time? Oh, not you, but rather your dangerous aunt. After she walked free last time, she got up to her old nefarious yeah. habits again. And now the FBI are taking you for 24 hours because, well, you know her best. There are about 15,000 agents working for the FBI with 56 regional offices. Their main training facility is located in Quantico, Virginia. More than 100 special agents are at the facility at any given time, ready to train new agents. They'll also teach our Arnold. An FBI agent has to be prepared for anything, but not for this. How can that even possibly come in handy, Arnold? FBI agents received the right to carry weapons in 1934, a whole 26 years after their founding. Nowadays, marksmanship training is absolutely necessary and one of the most important courses. And Arnold seems to be doing just fine. Having proved his abilities at all stages of training, our Arnold will become an FBI agent for 24 hours. Not bad company, Arnie. Perhaps our Arnold will try his hand at the cyber department created in 2002. That's where they have the kind of cutting-edge technology that will help Arnold in his search. Have you actually found what you're looking for already, Arnold? Come on, buck up, Arnold. I knew I shouldn't have expected much. After all, your belly always comes first. Thanks to a tip-off that was received by, of course, not Arnold, the FBI managed to find out where his aunt's accomplice lives, the infamous biker known as Buffalo Joe. And now a special operation is being carried out. Here's our suspect. Everybody get ready. Oh, Come on, Arnold. It's always something with you. Arnold, come on. Your colleagues need help. How are you going to stop him like that? What? 
It can't be. Ooh. Somehow, your idiocy serves you well. Here's your chance to interrogate a prisoner. Well, Arnold, to get answers, mm. you have to ask questions. And they say silence is golden. Oh, you have an idea, do you? You gonna give him a lesson on good behavior? Oh, God, what a treacherous move. Arnold, I don't recognize you. I didn't expect you to be able to break this mountain of muscles like he was a little baby boy. Well, Arnold, you're darn close to capturing your aunt. I see you think you're already a real FBI agent, Arnold, but you're still acting like a typical cop. Hey, how's about we continue with the search for your auntie? Let's go take a peek into the FBI archives. Over 5,000 individual strands of hair are stored here as evidence. There are even case files for Charlie Chaplin and John Lennon. We need to find your aunt's case so we can get a warrant to wiretap her butt. Now we can listen in on your aunt, just like with Pablo Escobar. And according to the latest information, she's just ordered herself a pizza. Arnold, this is your chance. You can go undercover. For your safety, you'll have a hidden microphone on you. And your task is to surreptitiously hide a bug in her office. The time is now. Hop to it, Arnold. Now, everything depends on you. It's really important that you try to act as naturally as possible. Ay, ay, ay! What a doorbell! Arnie, go into her house already. This is your chance. Go, go. Come on, Arnold. This is your mission. Go and put the bug in her office. Great. Now slowly and carefully sneak closer. Yikes! We seem to have a bit of a problem, Arnold. Uh, quick, come up with something. Oh, no. Arnold, get out! Run! Before it's too late! Yee! She's a little more dangerous than I thought. Arnie, hold on. Somebody's going to rescue you for sure. Uh-oh. The jig is up, buddy. Now she's going to myrtleize you without batting an eyelash. Did you come to apologize, Arnold? That's so sweet of you. Mr. Nice Guy. But your auntie's got other ideas. <laughs> you know, it's kind of ironic. You were chasing her before. Now she's chasing you, buddy. Are you sure it's okay to take pictures here? Arnold, I have bad news. All governments all around the world have been overthrown, and they're now each ruled by dictators. Yes, on the one hand, it's good. No one will leave their countries anymore, and everyone will work for their country's well-being and standing in the world. But on the other hand, under such regimes, most people won't live in houses or residential complexes, but in prisons, because the laws of the countries will be very strict and sometimes even really strange. You can forget about the benefits of civilization. After all, foreign economic relations aren't needed anymore, and each country will now work just for itself. But what that means is if before there wasn't any heavy industry in your country, like, for example, making vehicles, now you won't be able to get a new car, and all you can ever hope for is some crappy bicycle at best. And I'm not saying that all social media has disappeared, but but now you can only have private conversations with your friends somewhere deep in the woods. And with the radio turned up really loud. And now, even if you want a haircut, your hairstyle will need to get an approval from the local administration. And there are just a limited number of government-approved hairdos. But what's most frightening is that all countries now suspect each other of being a potential threat. So, almost all resources of every country are invested in military buildups. And alas, one of these days, somebody's gonna break down and hit that big red button. Arnold, you saved the world! Who would have thought your colorblindness would save the planet? Hello, Arnold. I know that you absolutely love traveling, especially traveling in time. Welcome to the year 2100. 
This girl has contact lenses that connect to the internet. She can look up any information about you in just a few seconds. Here you will die as a virgin. Get inside. This space elevator will lift you up to an altitude of 35,000 kilometers above sea level, straight to a huge ring that turns the energy of the Earth's rotation into electricity. To your right is a human body part shop. Let's go inside and look for a replacement for your unfortunate finger. This doctor can recreate an entire organism from only the genome. So all the zoos here are teeming with dinosaurs, dodo birds, and even Neanderthals. You want a snack? 3D printers print food from artificial animal cells, synthesize flour and minerals, and it tastes better than food from 2019. What a wonderful world, right? But it all could turn out quite different. Nuclear war, global warming, pandemics. This could also be our future. Science is a double-edged sword. We can use it for good, or we could all die from it. And today he's in Europe checking out this ancient temple. And it's pretty creepy in here. Hey, who turned off the light? Arnold, you better not touch anything. What's going on? Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century. And we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black <laughs> magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you are any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. These medieval Catholics are so wild. They believe in every... Hi, Arnold. So, you decided to do a good deed. All of this just for the donuts. Oh, you bastard. Well, no worries. Today, you'll have a chance to do a really good deed. The whole planet is infected with diarrhea virus from China. But I made your blood the only existing vaccine. There are 7 billion people in the world, and everyone is hunting for you. 195 countries have posted your photo on all possible media. You're in all of the police databases, and not only the world's police, 
But all the best special forces in the world are after you. MI6, British intelligence, which has been working around the clock for 100 years straight. ISI, Pakistan's interdepartmental intelligence agency, with the largest residency in the world, 10,000 agents. The CIA, watch out Arnie, they torture people. The Canadian Intelligence Service, with a search budget of over $507 million. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you. Big Brother is watching you. In New York City alone, there are about 20,000 surveillance cameras. They take photos, compare the distance between the main features on your face, nose, eyes, mouth. Data is converted into a person's numeric code, a face print, and verified with the database. In addition, on the dark net, anyone can buy image databases from video cameras of cafes, hospitals, shopping centers, even near the main FBI headquarters. Meaning they can find out where you were just five minutes ago. Catch this. These glasses with built-in infrared LEDs will help you to hide your face from the cameras. For them, your face will look like a glowing blind spot. Wait a bit. You forgot the battery. This isn't enough. You need a disguise. It was a bad idea to eat this many donuts. They provoked an excessive accumulation of gases. Unleash the winds! You look good, but search dogs will find you by the smell of butyric acid, the odorous component of your sweat. It won't help that just one gram of sweat is enough for the dog to smell you on the roof of that 10-story building or at a depth of 15 feet under concrete. In the United States alone, there are nearly 7 million drones. Stop waving and take this special weapon against drones. This gun fires a wide stream of electromagnetic emissions so you don't have to aim. It's enough for the interference stream to cover the drone, and then it'll lose contact with its base and lose control. What have you done? Get lost in the crowd, bone brain! Well, you have to kiss. So, Arnie, any last wishes? <laughs> and he's walking around the zoo today. Hey, Dipknob, stop acting like you're king of the beasts. Have some respect, Arnold. You and the chimpanzee share ancestors. We diverged from them seven million years ago. Life lived in the forest and in open plains simultaneously helped us develop bipedalism and our upright posture. This in turn freed up our hands for tool use and other useful activities such as taming fire. Cooking food helped contribute to better and faster digestion, which together with some other things led to us developing our bigger and better brains. Yes, Arnie, I know it's hard to believe, but the march of evolution is still ongoing. For example, because we began to cook food before eating, our jaws have shrunk and wisdom teeth have already stopped growing in 20% of human beings. In addition, along with the improvement in the quality of food, the average height of Homo sapiens has increased by 10 centimeters. But then again, so has his weight. However, for modern people, it's not body changes that are so important, but technology. It allows us to move around while sitting, fly, and even get a cold beer without getting out of our comfy chairs. What'll be next? Wow, look! It looks like scientists have created a supercomputer that can predict our future. And it has a message for us. Let's listen. 
Over the past hundred years, the number of people on the planet has quadrupled. At the same time, humanity has destroyed 80% of all animal fauna. And environmental pollution has already led to irreversible climate change. Therefore, in the future, due to global warming, our bodies will stretch, our skin will darken, and our ears will grow out for better heat dissipation. Whoa, Arnold, you look a lot like your neighbor, Henry. But the fact is, in the last 150,000 years, Homo sapiens' brains have shrunk by 200 grams, and they're continuing to shrink. A more comfortable life leads to inactivity and degradation. Homo sapiens could lose his intelligence forever. <laughs> taking a vacation for the first time in 10 years, and he's gonna have fun. Sorry, but it seems like your vacation will have to be postponed. Elon Musk's spaceship has crashed. Another failure after the disastrous launch of the Cybertruck. He really wants to colonize Mars. Elon Musk has managed to dehydrate people and pack them into capsules. Look, it works like instant noodles. Just add water. On board, there were 67.5 billion capsules, so now there will be 10 times as many dumbasses on Earth. But this isn't your problem. Although, actually, it probably is your problem as well now. With so many people, they can't all be provided with transport. It's faster to walk. Each person on the planet produces about 0.75 kilograms of garbage every day. So, more than 200 trillion tons of garbage per year. This is enough to completely fill about 99 Grand Canyons. Power plants are being built everywhere. Because 75 billion people consume about 125 billion kilowatts per day. This amount of electricity is enough to charge 8 trillion iPhones. But this also means emitting huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. You don't need to be a genius to realize just how seriously this will affect the climate. Free space is in short supply. So here are your new roommates. Only men. Reproduction is strictly prohibited by law under penalty of death. This world definitely doesn't need any little Arnold Rugrats running around. Although, you were unlucky with women anyway. By the way, you hungry? You want to eat something? All food is now synthetic and recycled. You just tasted a recycled toilet paper patty. I cooked it just for you, like pearls before swine. Anyway, you still have to spend the night in this corner. Due to the increase in CO2, all the glaciers have melted and flooded 35% of the land. Given the agricultural needs of people for food, less than 1% of land is left for housing. Now, only rich people can afford to sleep with their legs extended. Damn, Arnold, I envy such a shorty like you. Go sit and watch a movie on the internet on Slow Fix. Oops, to enter, you need to take a number and stand in line. You are the 1,250th. Due to overpopulation, internet speeds have dropped by 99.5%. Look where you're going! 20-story cemeteries are only for millionaires. The rest of the population are buried on any free piece of land. Pack your bags! Elon Musk built an ark from ocean debris and said he'd move you to the underwater Las Vegas. Cities are now built 9,000 meters underwater, like Everest, but down instead of up. You can finally rest, Arnie. At least in your hallucinations. <laughs> this is Arnold. Arnold, I know you're a little tired of all of our experiments. How about some happy time for you, then? We can arrange that. Here, take this remote. As you can see, it has three buttons. Press the first one. You've just traveled three billion years back in time. Only unicellular organisms live during this era. No pain, no humiliation. So, Arnold, you happy now? On second thought, to be honest, I'm worried for humankind if you should somehow become its founding father. Ah, uh, how's this for a change? Earth, 2020, and you're now the happiest human alive. Because you're the only human alive. Everyone else on the planet disintegrated when a dark matter experiment went awry. 
What are your plans, Arnold? Hey, where are you going? I wonder how long you can survive. With no one to work at power plants, there's no more electricity. And that means no heat, no fridge, and no clean water. Maybe you should look up some survival tips on the internet. Oh, wait, there's no internet anymore. You're just going to have to figure out how to survive on your own. Water. Bottled water has a shelf life of about two years, and you can sterilize river water with strong alcohol. What about food? The only food products with an unlimited shelf life are rice, powdered milk, and honey. And to be honest, I think it's unlikely you're ever going to master the art of hunting. To diversify your diet, you're going to have to move to Mexico. It's warmer there, and you can take up farming. You're also going to need to acquire some medical skills so you don't die the first time you cut yourself. And even after solving all these basic survival issues, you'll have to try not to lose your mind from the absolute and unrelenting loneliness. Well, looks like you made it, Arnold. Alone and without all those pesky people who produce foodstuffs, build houses, manage water treatment facilities, monitor sensors at nuclear power plants, and control space stations. Meet Arnold. He had a difficult childhood. Now he's making up for lost time. Did you know, Arnold, that there are 15,000 nuclear warheads in the world with a combined capacity of about 7,500 megatons? You should also probably know that five minutes ago I sent one of them in your direction. There's no point hitting the gas, Arnold. The electromagnetic pulse wave killed all the electronics modern cars are so chock full of. Next, you're going to be hit by the shockwave. Even if this old rust bucket were made of solid graphene, which at the atomic level is even stronger than diamond, and you somehow miraculously survive all this destruction, you're still going to go through living hell. Wake your skinny ass up, Arnold. We need to check how far you are from the epicenter of the explosion. Remember, if you see a mushroom cloud, stick your hand out in that direction and raise your thumb. If the cloud is bigger than your thumb, then you're in the radioactive zone. What a lucky guy. Do you have sunscreen? It won't help, you dumbass. I'm joking. You should run away from here. Fast. Radioactive isotopes in small quantities have already begun to slowly destroy your DNA. How do you feel, my friend? Yes, that's right, it's a good time for a shower. Avoiding contact with contaminated items and using special water procedures can increase your chances of survival. Do you have a water filter, Arnold? Even the weakest radiation will result in progressively malignant tumors. Well, congratulations, you got through a nuclear attack, and you no longer need a Halloween costume. But this isn't the end. If someone in the world launches a missile with a nuclear warhead, a domino effect will follow. All the nuclear powers of the world will let loose their dogs of war. Then comes the real apocalypse, Arnold. The era of humanity is likely to end. You're gonna die, my friend. It's time to get out of this universe. Meet Arnold. And today, he's made a bet with Elon Musk that he can outrun a Tesla in his regular old internal combustion engine car. Don't worry, Elon is unlikely to reach the finish line. After all, no one took into account that while the race was taking place, Snot and Gob would be arranging a barbecue for themselves. It seems that even the normal temperature of the sun isn't enough to grill their infamous pan-galactic gargle bangers. Oh. Ah, now that's much better. Oops. Solar flares like these are not good because they usually disable all the power plants and electrical appliances on the Earth. This will definitely negatively affect all vital processes on the planet, particularly in medicine, or such absolutely crucial needs like social networks, likes, and reposts. Only Satanists won't be affected. It might even benefit them. And here's our ultra-fast turtle. Like everything electric, Elon's car broke down. The important thing here is not to celebrate ahead of time. He might be dumb, but Arnold for sure knows how to wink perfectly. Too bad he's intellectually challenged. The battery has died. Now, these guys need somehow get out of the desert. It's good that Elon has already come up with something. And it's even better that his trunk has a, a bucket, a mini rocket, and groceries. Ooh, potatoes are a great idea. After all, one potato can stably deliver 0.5 volts of voltage. It will take about 13 volts to start Arnold's combustion engine car. So, with 26 potatoes, a zinc nail, and copper wire, we should have enough to start the car. Darn it. 
The crank current is too low. To start the engine, you need hundreds of thousands of potato batteries. I'd advise you to hurry up. The sun is setting and the desert nights here get quite cold. Wow, guys, great outfit. I hope we can do without the famous blue crystal here today. Oh, wait, I know what you're trying to do. If we take zinc bowls, screws, coins, sponges, potassium oxide, copper, brake pads, and we mix them together and connect them to the car, then we'll have a regular battery charge. The guys did everything right. It's a shame that there still isn't enough power to drive. Hurry up, the clock is ticking. Arnold, stop digging around there. Wait, show me what you found. A magnet! This is exactly what we need, Arnold. Hey, Elon, this isn't the best time for that. Ah, it's for a common cause. In 1831, Faraday conducted a similar experiment for the first time. For this, we need a coil, copper wire, and a magnet. We insert the magnet in a coil wound with copper. We move the magnet inside, and in each coil of copper, a voltage of 0.01 volts is generated. But due to the large number of turns, everything is working just fine. Let's see how it works for the guys. Wow, just be careful with your finger. Well, at least we survived. And the finger will grow back. Arnold, leave the Tesla here. And now the party continues. Uh-oh. See you in the next episode! Don't ask how he ended up in a Tesla tied to a Falcon 9 rocket. And don't ask why. Just please don't ask. Well, are you ready, Arnie? I'm starting the countdown. Remember, to leave the Earth, the rocket should reach escape velocity speed of 25,000 miles per hour, or 11.2 kilometers a second your body will start to feel crazy heavy. It will aggravate your blood circulation in cerebral vessels. Then your vision will become blurred and perhaps completely lost. Hang in there, Arnold. If you lose consciousness, you won't be able to put your spacesuit on. And without your spacesuit, at an altitude of 19 kilometers, the tissues in your feeble body will swell and all the liquids, such as snot and tears, will start to boil. If I were you, I'd hurry up. Oh, yes. I forgot to warn you that a spacesuit for spacewalks weighs about 130 kilograms. In conditions like Earth's gravity, it will simply crush your weak little chicken body. So you'll have to put it on after you're already in orbit. But take it easy, Arnie. If you move too quickly, there's a chance you'll burn up from the inside. As in space, the body's thermoregulatory mechanisms sometimes fail. Sweat evaporates poorly in space, and this prevents cooling of the body. Therefore, during intense activity, your temperature can rise above 40 degrees Celsius. Oh, hell, Arnold, you fainted after all. Oh, has the duck cheered you up? Well, I have bad news for you. Because of the collision, the navigation equipment has been damaged and the rocket's off course. The command center's trying to get you back onto the Martian trajectory, but unfortunately, one stage of the Falcon 9 is damaged, and most likely, in five hours, you're going to crash into the moon. What the hell, Arnold? Did you just pee your pants? In the earliest spacesuits, NASA tried to make a system for disposing of waste, but in the end, modern astronauts just use good old diapers, which you certainly don't have, do you, Arnold? Well, I certainly hope you didn't eat breakfast today, because right in front of you, there's a small cloud of space junk, and just behind it, a mini meteoroid. It seems it's time to say goodbye. I'm gonna miss you, Arnold. What the hell, Arnold? Arnold! Are you alive or what? Oh no, you've somehow discovered Elon Musk's master plan for galactic conquest, and now he's gonna choose the worst punishment for you. No! Anything but that again, he sent you back to the planet of robots. In case you've forgotten what to do, hurry up, grab your tablet, and level up your skills on how to survive in this world. Meet Gertrude and Arnold. This little piggy is a little smarter than Arnold. And no, not because it has a Neuralink chip in its brain, but because she came here by bus, unlike our red-headed fool who parked his car with the Mafia for $50 an hour. At this conference, Elon Musk will demonstrate the process of installing an advanced microchip into the brain of these cute little monkeys and in the near future into the brain of a person. Arnold, stop teasing the primates with your keys. See, great.
Well, you had it coming, buddy. I don't understand how Elon could have invited such a doofus to his conference. From a scientific point of view, Neuralink is a fairly simple device. It's a set of electrodes that transmit electrical impulses from neurons in the brain to a computer. But from a technical point of view, it's an astonishingly complex device. Imagine that the brain is a big ball of extraordinarily tangled wires, and you need to carefully connect to it without damaging anything. Arnold, run! It's time to pay for parking or a tow truck truck is going to take your car. We need to get the keys from the chimpanzees as soon as possible. Who, with parking prices like these, you're going to have to live on dollar store ramen till the end of the month. Get in the monkey suit. You'll have better luck this way. Trust me. I know it smells like butt cheese, but it's only for five minutes. One more time, Arnold. You can do it. Hey, dudes, where are you taking Arnold? Only I'm allowed to experiment on him. Elon, please be gentle with Arnold. But really, who am I talking to? I'm just a voice in the head of this dumbass. Arnold's brain is almost the same size as that of a primate, and this version of the chip will suit him perfectly. Thanks to Neuralink and Wi-Fi, Arnold can now communicate with other owners of this device via the power of thought. He also benefits from a tremendous increase in the speed of interaction with the Internet. Arnold, come on, concentrate. You can do it. Download Monkey Sign Language from the Internet. I never doubted that you'd succeed, Arnold, but I didn't think you'd drag it out for a whole day. I thought you were so stupid that even the Neuralink chip couldn't help you. But you just forgot to turn it on, you moron. Get ready, we're taking the bus back with Gertrude. Your car was sold to pay the parking fees. They got 600 bucks for it. Elon Musk has managed to dehydrate people and pack them into capsules. Look, it works like instant noodles. Just add water. On board, there were 67.5 billion capsules. So now, there will be 10 times as many dumbasses on Earth. But this isn't your problem. Although, actually, it probably is your problem as well now. With so many people, they can't all be provided with transport. It's faster to walk. Each person on the planet produces about 0.75 kilograms of garbage every day. So, more than 200 trillion tons of garbage per year. This is enough to completely fill about 99 Grand Canyons. Power plants are being built everywhere because 75 billion people consume about 125 billion kilowatts per day. This amount of electricity is enough to charge 8 trillion iPhones. But this also means emitting huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. You don't need to be a genius to realize just how seriously this will affect the climate. Free space is in short supply. So here are your new roommates. Only men. Reproduction is strictly prohibited by law under penalty of death. This world definitely doesn't need any little Arnold Rugrats running around. Although, you were unlucky with women anyway. By the way, you hungry? You want to eat something? All food is now synthetic and recycled. You just tasted a recycled toilet paper patty. I cooked it just for you, like pearls before swine. Anyway, you still have to spend the night in this corner. Due to the increase in CO2, all the glaciers have melted and flooded 35% of the land. Given the agricultural needs of people for food, less than 1% of land is left for housing. Now, only rich people can afford to sleep with their legs extended. Damn, Arnold, I envy such a shorty like you. Go sit and watch a movie on the internet on Slowfix. Oops, to enter, you need to take a number and stand in line. You are the 1,250th. Due to overpopulation, internet speeds have dropped by 99.5%. Look where you're going! 20-story cemeteries are only for millionaires. The rest of the population are buried on any free piece of land. 
Pack your bags. Elon Musk built an ark from ocean debris and said he'd move you to the underwater Las Vegas. Cities are now built 9,000 meters underwater, like Everest, but down instead of up. Meet Arnold. Being an experienced astronaut, he was entrusted with delivering fresh supplies of food and clothing to the International Space Station. Arnold, stop eating food that's meant for the crew. What do you have there? Don't tell me. That's a homemade burrito. Did you make it for the astronauts? The rocket has successfully docked with the ISS. Get ready! To open the door, you need to click on the green button in 3, 2, 1. Green button, Arnold! Green! I doubt that any of the astronauts are going to rush to your aid after you left them without any food. You have enough air for eight hours. Somehow, during this time, you have to get to the ISS by yourself. Moving your body around ain't going to do nothing. Even if you run like Sonic, your body's going to stay in one place. So, here are some real options for moving in space. The first option is using the air from your oxygen tank. Air moves through its tubes at a speed of 50 kilometers per second. This kind of energy, in just 60 seconds, could carry you as far as 3 kilometers. But this will significantly reduce your air supply. So, let's move on to the second option. Burrito. You wrapped it in foil. And foil is an excellent reflector. If you make a sail out of the foil, then particles of light reflecting off of it will transmit their momentum to the foil and thereby accelerate you through space. Did you hear nothing I said about a sail? Son of a schmuck! Ooh, we could use that too. Gases exit the human body at a speed of 3 meters per second, and they can fill an entire balloon in a day. You just need to think of a way to let them out. Arnold, what are you up to? How many burritos did you eat? Just a little bit left. Stretch! And... Remember that show Love, Death and Robots? You're gonna have to tear off your hand. Okay, or just your finger. You only have three meters left. Detach part of the suit and throw it in the opposite direction. This will push you forward. Ooh. Quick, make a wish. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The lucky first tourist to win a free trip to the moon is ticket holder number 2871. And here's the lucky ducky himself. Meet Arnold. The average distance from Earth to the moon is 384,467 kilometers, and every year the moon moves three and a half centimeters further away. In the entire history of humanity so far, only 12 people have stepped on the surface of the moon. You will be the 13th. I agree, it's not the luckiest number, but just imagine, there'll be no one on the moon except for you. True, this ain't Miami. The temperature is minus 173 degrees Celsius. And everywhere you go, there's radiation 200 times higher than on Earth. So you can't do it without a spacesuit. But in the meantime, as a tourist, you can check into the hotel. Although construction isn't slated until 2025. Let's go to the far side of the moon. Especially because there's a bunch of cool equipment left there by astronauts. Arnold, jump into the lunar rover, start the engine, and drive. Believe it or not, there are a few lunar seas. Only, they're not filled with water, but solidified lava. Arnold, wrong pedal! Hit the brake! Congratulations, Arnold. You just smashed into the U-22 Chinese lunar rover. And you damaged your spacesuit. Oh, no. Houston, we have a problem. Don't worry, Arnold. Help is on the way. True, it's going to take them three days to get here. And try to conserve your oxygen. 
Good luck, Arnold. Great news, buddy. You're saved. But you lost a ah. finger. Arnold, you're now a true hero. That's why NASA's giving you a free ticket to Mars. Departure in three hours. Arnold is trying on his new multi-million dollar super tough suit. Hey, you dumbass, put your underpants back on. Today, you're going to visit the smallest and largest planets in the solar system. Do you hear me? You're leaving in one minute. Pull harder. Ready? Go. <laughs> Whoops. We flew too far. More precisely, the sun pulled us in. Now, to overcome its gravitational pull and reach Mercury, we'll need more fuel than we would to leave the solar system. Huh, it worked out somehow. It's dead hot to the left and ice cold to the right. I'll drop you at the junction point. The temperature there is about minus 100 degrees. Great plan. Or it could be if we were on Earth. You can't slow down with a parachute here. Almost all of Mercury's gases have scattered into space due to its weak magnetic field and gravity. What a beautiful sight. Mercury is three times closer to the sun than the Earth, so the sun looks much bigger here. You idiot! Mercury also rotates, but one day here is equal to 88 days on Earth. Pick your butt up and run! Gravity is 62% weaker than on Earth, so your already puny 40 kilograms is just 15 here. <laughs> now you weigh about the same as my cat. Don't move! Yep, moisture comes out of the body. Stomach gases are pushed out. I told you not to drink Coke before we left. The fluid in your soft tissues turns to gas. This explains the bloating. And stop! Ten seconds. Great! Your brain and heart are still working, and death would have come in 80 seconds. Our next stop is Jupiter. Calm down, breathe deeper. Inhale, exhale. Breathe. Dive! With its powerful gravity, Jupiter's pull is two and a half times stronger than on Earth. Your speed is that of a Bugatti sports car, 430 kilometers per hour. Now row out of here, you blockhead. You can't even imagine what it is. Three words. Great red spot. This is the most powerful hurricane in our solar system. Its winds reach 600 kilometers per hour. Our entire beloved planet Earth could be swallowed up by this maelstrom in the blink of an eye. You've descended to 156 kilometers. This is the limit of human exploration. The dense atmosphere doesn't allow for transmission of radio signals or light. This is a zone of high electrical activity, so lightning bolts a thousand kilometers long are quite common. The pressure at a depth of 20,000 kilometers is more than three million times that on Earth, and the temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Celsius, and you're still alive. What a great suit we made. And what if we do this? Wow, that was fast. Enough for today. Hurry, take off his suit. We don't want to get blood all over it. Thank you all for the work. See you again tomorrow. Hey, it's Arnold. You must be tired of being on your home planet from the last episode. Let's go back into space. So that you won't be lonely, meet the black hole. No, we don't mean your ex. Black holes occur when a star collapses under its own weight. Gravity becomes so strong that even light cannot escape it. We'll stay here, but sorry, Arnold, you've got to go. The boundary of a black hole is called the event horizon, and the closer you are to it, the more you get stretched out like spaghetti. By the way, the event horizon is affected by Hawking radiation, so you'll gradually move from being al dente to ashes. But this is just from our point of view. From your perspective, you continue to move normally, even after reaching the event horizon. It's strange, isn't it? You just split into two, but this cannot be according to quantum physics. So we had to sacrifice one of our Arnolds. What will happen to you here? No one really knows. Space and time change places inside a black hole. Now you can fly through space and, more than that, you can travel through time. But you can never get out because no one can return to the past. Arnold, you will die soon from dehydration or from the fact that your oxygen has run out. Arnold, you must be tired of the fact that something very unpleasant is happening around you. We have a surprise. Today, nothing will be around you, even air. Welcome to free space. Did you grab a spacesuit? It was in vain. To the disappointment of the audience, you will not explode because of the difference in pressure. The skin can retain internal organs and protect your blood from boiling. Are you surprised that you are not covered in a crust of ice?
The fact is that the vacuum of space has no thermal conductivity and convection. So to get to even absolute zero will take a very, very long time. There's no oxygen, so nothing protects you from the ultraviolet rays and radiation. Soon burns will appear on unprotected skin areas. But this is not the worst thing. Your main enemy is the lack of oxygen. The brain will turn off after 10 to 15 seconds. Arnold? Probably happened already. You fainted. You have about 30 seconds to 2 minutes. If during this time the body is again given access to oxygen and restored to pressure, then you can fully live the rest of your life. Although your full life is unlikely to be experienced. That's because, of course, you have not thought of holding your breath. In this case, the air in your lungs will simply rupture. Ah, that's what that sound was. Today, he will visit a place where no man has gone before. It is the center of the Earth. The center of the Earth is 7,891 miles from the surface. If Arnold gets there, he'll receive the Darwin Award a hundred times over. Let's give him a hand. Hey, Arnold, catch! Unfortunately, we'll hear a not-so-cheerful sound when you fall into the liquid layer of the outer core of the Earth. Because, first, you will burn, as the temperature is already 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit, just at a distance of 24.8 miles. And not even a handful of ashes can reach the core, as the temperature is like that on the surface of the Sun, and you will be compressed with a pressure of over 300 gigapascals. But we did something special for you, Arnold. We dug a tunnel just for you through the entire Earth. You need not fear either the temperature nor the pressure inside. Assuming that there is no air resistance in our tunnel, you will reach a speed of 18,020 miles per hour. This would be fast enough to escape the Earth's gravity and fly you into space, if you were flying up. You'll find yourself in a state of weightlessness at the center of the Earth, but you will fall further by inertia. And, continuously slowing, you will finally reach the opposite end of the Earth, 38 minutes after the flight begins, and your speed will reach zero. And if nobody catches you, then you'll fall back again, doing this endlessly back and forth inside the tunnel. And what could be funnier, Arnold? The Earth is spinning, and you're moving 1,491 miles an hour faster than the walls of your tunnel. Hello, Arnold. You've been teleported a lot during our science show, but did you ever wonder how the teleporter works? There are several ways to travel through time. Let's start with wormholes. Where have you been dreaming of going? To Australia? No problem, get in. A wormhole is a tunnel through the space-time continuum that theoretically could send you to any point in the universe in just a few seconds. But time is relative, Arnie, and it might take just a few seconds for you, but on Earth, decades could pass. Congratulations, Arnie! You're in Australia in the year 2050. It's a little uncomfortable, yeah? And what if you needed to move around at the same time? Quantum teleportation can help in this matter. Your body consists of a hundred trillion cells, which in turn consists of a hundred trillion atoms each. And each atom contains tiny pinpoint particles, quanta, which could help you teleport over huge distances. It would be great to find someone who could help you build a quantum teleporter. Well, look who's here. Rick and Morty. Arnie, take their drawings. With their help, you could create a device for instantaneous movement anywhere in the universe and even into alternate universes. Now, when the teleporter's ready, climb into the box and make sure there's no one else inside. Well, so long, Arnold. In quantum teleportation, the original body dies and a duplicate is created at the destination point. No big loss in your case. Wow! I told you, during teleport, you need to be alone inside the booth. Don't touch anything in the laboratory. What have you done? Your DNA, which was hybridized with that of a scorpion, was transmitted through the satellite system and turned all the inhabitants of the planet into human-scorpion hybrids.
You've destroyed Dimension C-137, you stupid idiot, Arnie. Rick and Morty would have traveled back to the original universe, where the mutants don't exist. But you can only do it a couple of times. I don't think we want to see what happens to Arnie in this universe. Better we go back to Australia. Fortunately, I saved Arnold's quantum data, and therefore have the ability to recover his useless body. Arnie, you should crawl through the wormhole in the direction of your home in 2018. And don't forget the blueprints of your body. It seems now we know how humanity will create a teleporter in 2050. He's desperately trying to hide from the cruel and merciless government, which is forcing him 24-7 to make love. <laughs> July 20th, Arnold went on an intergalactic cruise. After coming back on the 27th, he returned to find not a single male left on Earth. Everything has gone wrong. Telephones and microwaves don't work. Uber has been replaced with bicycles and horse-drawn carts. Instead of lamps and houses, candles have been lit again. This is because all of the areas in which mostly men previously worked have now ground to a halt. Arnold, why are you running away? Every day, your body produces up to 70 million spermatozoa. You could physically fertilize up to eight women per day. But since many have disdained even touching you, it was decided to artificially plant your seed in the egg cells. And so the number of pregnant women has increased to 15 million. Now, you're not just more popular than all the Kardashian sisters put together. You become a matter of national importance. Women please you and carefully examine you. But there's a flip side to all of this. You're a prisoner, and you have no right to leave the country or evade your obligations. Your seed is now worth more than any precious metal in the world, and soon will instigate a third world war. It will all end in... No, in 14 years, when the boys begin to enter that transitional age, and the first seed appears. Papa! Arnie, please welcome the audience. Oh yeah, you're dying. We need to warm you up somehow. Hmm, what if we go to the sun? Just for a nanosecond. The surface temperature of our sun is 5,800 degrees Kelvin. It sounds terrible, but in fact, this bag of shit does not even sweat for a nanosecond in the sun. The brain realizes that it saw a bright flash only 30 million nanoseconds after. And if we are talking about Arnold's brain, it will take twice as long. But what if you change the teleport settings a bit and say you're inside? The temperature inside the sun reaches 15 million degrees Kelvin, unlike the surface. Here you will already be baked, as it should be. You will feel yourself as if in a microwave before you can be served on a tray with an apple in your mouth due to short photon waves. The heart, stomach, and liver will burst inside the body. Arnie, as you dreamed when you dressed as a pirate and cried, Arr, shiver me timbers, to the last Halloween. Only there's one little problem. Your DNA ionizes even before you burn, so we cannot clone you anymore. You need to come up with another way to save your fat ass. Hey, Arnie, your tricks suck. If you want to be popular, you need to stand out. How about some real magic? For example, the magician Harry Houdini got out of being buried alive with his hands tied. I think you know what I'm getting at, Arnie. Today, we're going to bury you alive for the third time. And since people have seen you perform this trick a bunch of times already, you're going to do it in a special way this time. We're going to handcuff you. And the coffin's going to be made out of metal. Okay, Arnie, buddy. Ready? Get in. During past burials, you already learned the most important rule. You need to breathe calmly and deeply in order to conserve your oxygen. Okay, now quit being calm. We need to get the handcuffs off. It's really simple. All you need to do is break one finger on each hand so you can slip them through the cuffs. 
Oh, quit your <laughs> belly aching, Arnie. You still got two more fingers left. Use your belt or watch to try to crack open the lid. A metal coffin has weak points all along the edges. Come on, Arnie, I was kidding. You can't break through the metal, doofus. There's two meters of earth above you, which is pressing down with a mass of almost two and a half tons. So this third burial will probably be your last. Arnie. Arnie. Arnie, where are you? Oh, you little bastard. Yes, you really are Arnie Houdini. In just the same way, Harry Houdini climbed through a secret compartment in the sidewall of the coffin and into a tunnel. And then through a hatch in the grave, he dropped down on the coffin from above and covered himself with a half meter layer of dirt. But where's the hatch, Arnie? Surprise! You didn't really think I'd let you out so easy, did you? Ah! Swim up, Arnold, before the concrete sets. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. The concrete solution, when interacting with water, forms alkaline molecules. And because there's a lot of moisture in your skin, then, well, it's gonna hurt. Congratulations, Arnold. You did it. You managed to attract attention to yourself. Revel in the glory. Oh, are you teaching spot commands? Right. The best way to teach something is to show by your own example. Hey, Arnold. Arnold! Oh, no. Whoops. We have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared. But you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone! You're only two meters deep. Hooray! There's one line of connection. Call your loved ones. They'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid hmm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. I have it. Geotag post gets 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Breakthrough. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it. Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a depth if it's equal or less than their height. But since we have two meters here, you should try to crawl up like a worm. Arnold, you're almost there! Hey. Congratulations! Uh -uh. <laughs> He's alive despite all the misfortune. The bad news is that the rest of the people don't know about it. And now he's in a coffin. Hey, the poor guy. Do you want some advice? Keep calm. The deeper you breathe, the more you spend oxygen, which you have enough for one to two hours. Try to breathe deeply and exhale slowly. This will help prolong your life, which is not needed by anyone. It's easy to break through the lid in cheap coffins. Such bad guys like you will be buried in these coffins. Remember what Peimei taught you. Well, or take the brass knuckles that your friends put in the coffin and hit the center. Cover your face with clothes so that the ground does not block your airway and start ramming the ground around yourself. When the place inside the coffin is finished, try to sit down. You did. Wow, we didn't believe in you the way your parents did. Now, try to crawl upwards, wriggling like a worm. Arnold, did you get out? It's incredible. I hope that no one thinks that you're a zombie. 
God, Arnold, you are such a loser that we have to pay twice for your funeral. Oh my God, did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually, it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's going to happen now? Is the big show of the season canceled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good-as-new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which, after transplantation, even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace these beautiful heads. You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more. And is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. <sighs> By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel huh? brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. What a beautiful day. What could possibly ruin this? Well, what if the Earth suddenly stopped? At a full stop, due to inertia, all objects will fly east, reaching a speed of more than 1,500 kilometers an hour. Also, atmospheric disturbances will create strong winds. But at the same time, don't forget, the gravity of the Earth will remain the same. The momentum of the oceans and seas will create giant tsunamis, absorbing 27 kilometers of land per minute. A complete day will now last a full year, as the Earth, at a speed of 29.78 kilometers a second, makes a full circle around the Sun. Daytime, sunrise to sunset, will last for six months under the hot, burning Sun, with the remaining six months being nighttime, with the chill dipping down to minus 55 degrees. With the Earth stopped, its centrifugal force will create high hills at the equator. Later, they'll disappear, leaving one solid ring continent at the equator, separating two gigantic oceans. But the worst thing that will happen will be due to the core of the Earth stopping spinning. After all, it's the large molten metal sphere, which, through rotation, generates the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the planet from radiation, so from now on, being on the surface is deadly dangerous. Arnold, I swear, you're like a moss piglet the way you survive disasters. You need to find shelter. I suggest you move to the equator where it's safest. Hurry, Arnold, you can catch the last bus to the catacombs. Now everyone has moved under the surface of the Earth. Don't worry, these are real cities with improved security. You can even grow food here. What an adventure, Arnold. I see that your day got off to a rocky start. I never thought I'd say this, but I feel sorry for you, Arnold. And I know someone who can help. Dr. Joe has a secret formula that can reduce any pain. But you redheads need more anesthesia than ordinary people. This is due to a gene that gives you your red hair color. Our bodies are made up of a huge number of cells. In order for them to interact, there are special proteins in the cell membrane, ion channels. 
Ion channels are something like gates for the senses. Thanks to them, we can feel warm and cold, smell and taste, and also experience pain. You can eat plenty of chocolate, Arnold. It's scientifically proven that chocolate can cause headaches. Perhaps, Arnold, this defect suits you, since you'll never have to feel the physical pain that I have to inflict on you. But don't celebrate just yet, buddy. Pain can also be emotional. So hold on. For example, unrequited love. This type of pain is experienced by people who sold their Bitcoin in 2015. Arnie, friend, cheer up. You don't feel pain and this can help emphasize your individuality. For example, you can insert a diamond into your forehead, just like the famous rapper Lil Uzi Vert. There are some people in the world who don't feel any pain at all. This is a consequence of a defect in the SCN9A gene. Such people can distinguish cold and hot. They feel touch, but the pain signals don't come through. Arnold, are you really gonna beat up Tagai's boyfriend for that kiss? Remember, Arnold, not feeling pain doesn't mean that you're immortal. You need to go to the hospital immediately. I see, you're still the same lazy guy. So while you don't feel pain, even ordinary tape will do. Oops, it looks like the effect of Dr. Joe's drug is over. Welcome back to normal life, Arnold. Arnold, that's just your style. Yes, today is definitely not your day. You look like crap. But it was worth it. You cheered up a lot of people. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and three points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine! Wake up, uh -huh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it. I never thought I'd say this, but you really had me worried. How are you feeling? Are you speaking Klingon? You became one of those who, after a coma, forgot their native language and began to speak in a completely foreign language. But the fact that you started eating dirt after a coma is something new. What a unique ignoramus you are after all. But congratulations, you've got your 10 million views. Are you taking an IQ test? Don't be so tense. You could burst the last remaining piece of your brain. Oh, you got upset and want to show that your intelligence is much higher. You're just fooling yourself. Although, I have an idea. The brain works much better when it receives a lot of nutrients. This can be achieved through more rapid circulation of the blood. A shot of adrenaline will increase your heart rate to 220 beats per minute. And a 40th cup of coffee will provide all 350. Let's see if we've nourished your brain enough. Well... But what if we make your heart contract at a speed of 300,000 times per second? Blood will run through your veins 20 times faster than the speed of sound. 
Obviously, all your veins and blood vessels will burst instantly, and your heart won't even be able to contract a second time. So, we'll do an upgrade. We'll replace your heart with a motor, and we'll make your blood more viscous. Now, this is a whole different story. In this form, you are a superman. All processes of the body are accelerated thousands of times. It will be the most productive time of your life. With such a brain, you could create a company more successful than Google or refine Einstein's theory of gravity, advancing humanity hundreds of years ahead. But because of your accelerated metabolism, you'll have to spend all your time on the toilet. But don't worry, it won't last for long. Your body can only withstand a maximum of two hours of such stress and strain, and then BAM! Ugh. Hey, Arnold, you forgot to take the test. Arnold! Arnold, where are you going to live now? It looks like in the woods. Well, I'm not even worried. You probably already know that you got to stuff leaves under your shirt to keep warm, filter your drinking water, and no, don't eat anything, huh? idiot! So, while you're not yet too far gone, listen carefully all around you. The noise of a tractor can be heard from three to four kilometers away. A dog barking two to three kilometers away. A train going by can be heard from ten kilometers away. And BTS songs, well, you can always hear them. Yee, what's that, Arnold? Ooh, just look. This little kid, he's lost, just like you. After all, slow lorises live mainly in tropical forests. Don't even try to pet him, Arnie. Lorises lick their elbow joints, which secrete a deadly venom so their bite can kill you. You should follow animal paths. It'll be great if you can find flowing water, a stream or river. Here you can get food by catching fish. Yeah, uh, Arnold, doing it that way, you'll be here all day. And as you can see, I was right. Night is the most dangerous time in a forest. Hey, uh, buddy, I think you ought to spend the night here in this tree. Yeah, it ain't the Ritz, but it sure is safe. In the morning, you need to get to a clearing so you're visible to rescuers. Finding a person in a forest is a very special operation involving rescuers, volunteers, and the military. The terrain is divided into squares, and each one is thoroughly combed. There was a case where somebody who was lost without knowing it ended up looking for himself. This guy managed to get out of the forest, didn't tell anyone, and joined in the search looking for him. You can be seen from the air if you make a fire. It's best to throw fresh foliage on it to make it really smoky. Oops. It's not the rescuers who found you, but a local hunter. He saw your fire. Congratulations, Arnie. You made it home. But wait, you rented it out. Well, that's no problem now, because you learned how to live in a tree. <laughs> Seems like you played for a little too long today, Arnie. The only sensible solution is to go to bed. Good night, Arnold. Ooh. Spending the whole day playing video games won't go unnoticed. After such excitement, something terrible can happen. For example, sleep paralysis. REM sleep is a state in which the body is immobilized. With sleep paralysis, your brain wakes up, but your muscles stay frozen. So you can see and hear, but you can't move. During these moments, hallucinations start to occur, and it feels like a demon is sitting on you. But this isn't for long. What's wrong, Arnie? Are you afraid to sleep in the dark? About 10% of people on Earth suffer from nyctophobia, the fear of darkness. Scientists believe that this trait is genetically inherited. Our ancestors were afraid of being eaten by nocturnal predators, and so our imagination paints the most terrible pictures in the dark. Ooh, it looks like there's someone behind that window. Ha! 
in the world ranking of candy-ass scaredy pants, you, Arnold, get first place. All fear is formed in the amygdala of the brain. A feeling of fear is formed in this little tiny one and a half centimeter sack. There were actual cases when people's amygdala was destroyed due to a disease called Erbach White. This permanently disables the fear response. But this most definitely doesn't apply to you, Arnold. You're afraid of everything, even your own shadow. Okay, okay, I'll turn on the light, just so you know that nobody's here. But sleeping with the lights on is a bad idea, too. It suppresses the amount of melatonin produced during sleep, which can lead to excess weight. Therefore, the choice is obvious. In order not to become an overweight, yellow-bellied poltroon, you need to sleep in the dark. Yeah, falling asleep when it feels like someone else is in the room is not an easy task. Maybe it's just your imagination. I love to wake him up when he's sleeping so sweetly. Get up, lazy butt! I have something for you, Arnold. You now have just 24 hours to live. I think you should Google what to do in such a situation. Yeah. First, clear your browser history. And here are the top three answers to this burning question. How would you spend the last day of your life with loved ones? I think for you, Arnold, this probably ain't the right answer. The second option is to gorge yourself on junk food. Well, you already do that every day. And finally, number three, spend the day at the ocean with a loved one. Ooh, it just got interesting. Arnold, are you really going to do what you've been dreaming of all your life? Whoopsie daisy, somebody ran out of gas and money. money, money, money. Great idea! You can get a loan and really live it up on your last day. Get the maximum. You'll feel like the richest dude on the planet. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, makes enough money to buy a new Tesla Model S every 50 seconds. You're rich now, Arnold. You can rent your own plane and fly anywhere you want. What are you up to? Wow, you're going to take Tagaya from her boyfriend and take her on a trip with you. Arnold, you're my hero. Ah, uh, if only we could turn back time and make this moment really last. What if I told you it's possible to keep the day from ending? You need to overtake the sun. To do this, we got to fly west along the equator at a speed of 1,667 kilometers per hour. If you can fly at that speed, the day will never end. Regrettably, this won't affect your lifetimer in the slightest. It's your last few seconds, Arnold. You're alive! Ah, I see. According to the contract you signed, you have no right to die until you pay off the loan. Bye-bye, yeah. Arnold. Arnold, are you getting married? The world was consumed by a new epidemic. The infected have spots on their skin. A terrible rash covers their entire face. They cough continuously and their front teeth fall out. And in order not to be isolated, people are inoculating en masse by buying the vaccine on the black market, deliberately putting themselves at risk as the vaccine has not yet been approved. But they do this so they can return to normal life as soon as possible. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. Here she is. Wow, what did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh, how did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie, it has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. 
At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you going to do? Wow, now that, that, that's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way. That's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's going to kick some butt. Yikes, this is kind of brutal even by my low standards. But very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch? This is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin, the most mysterious person of the 20th century. He's credited with hypnotic abilities and an extraordinary gift of healing. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80-proof potion. Looks like you're going to have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not going to be taken down so easily. Arnie, you're the only one left. Arnie, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there's no enemy but yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. You were a nice guy. Ooh, now I see. What a twist. Arnold, I congratulate you. Now that you're finally getting married, though to a zombie. Get your ass down here and choose what you'll eat first. Come on, Arnold. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. One bite from a baby cobra can kill a three-ton elephant. There's almost no air in its stomach. But when diving, snakes can hold their breath for up to 10 hours. Gastric juices will digest it in one and a half to two hours, as if it was a chicken. Everything that remains will have to go through the anus. Oh, look, it's venom. If it doesn't contact with your blood, it can't harm you. What the hell? Though as soon as it gets into an ulcer or a cut, the venom's effects are instant. Paralysis, convulsions, and after 15 minutes, you're a goner. But only if you don't use an antidote. Okay, who let the frog in? One gram of Philobate's Terribilis venom can kill a whole city worth of people. Should a small animal step on the trail of this frog, the toxin will kill him instantly. Even if you get a small drop of the poison on your skin, boom, you're dead. The frog will pass out 30 seconds after getting into the stomach, and 10 minutes of painful death will be waiting for you. And an antidote for this poison doesn't exist, so you can stop looking. And if a scorpion's poison is added to the philobate's poison, its strength will increase by 12 times. Any last wishes? Do you want the viewers to subscribe and leave a like?
Get up, doofwad. Bad weather doesn't justify taking a day off. What? You don't want to go to work. Then I suggest you work in bed. When NASA was studying how zero gravity impacts a person, they paid $18,000 to a volunteer to lie in a bed for 70 days. Just don't even think about getting up, Arnie. I hired a sniper who will terminate you at your very first try. You will eat, drink, and do everything else while lying down. See ya, buddy! Hey, did you get any sleep? How are you doing? I guess not so cool. It looks like you're gaining weight. All the energy that comes from the food you eat isn't going anywhere. But bed sores, that's bad. Due to high blood pressure, blood stops flowing to the skin. Hold on, old sport. Good news, Arnold. You're close to the record set by Soviet scientists. 370 days in bed. Yeah, you don't look so hot. Every day, you're losing 5% of your muscle mass. On top of that, your bones are also damaged. And due to your lack of mobility, your bones don't repair and they quickly start deteriorating. And paradoxically, falling asleep lying down becomes impossible. Without a shift in activity, the brain doesn't know what time of day it is or when it's time to sleep. But this does have its perks. You can watch all your favorite shows over and over again. I'll leave you here now. Enjoy the show, Arnold. Oh my god, Arnold! What did you do to yourself? I wasn't serious about the sniper. It's really not good to lie down so much. Get up! It's a shame we didn't release the episode where we turned you into a cat. Then you could lie there for years without too many problems. I see that your day got off to a rocky start. I never thought I'd say this, but I feel sorry for you, Arnold. And I know someone who can help. Dr. Joe has a secret formula that can reduce any pain. But you redheads need more anesthesia than ordinary people. This is due to a gene that gives you your red hair color. Our bodies are made up of a huge number of cells. In order for them to interact, there are special proteins in the cell cell membrane, ion channels. Ion channels are something like gates for the senses. Thanks to them, we can feel warm and cold, smell and taste, and also experience pain. You can eat plenty of chocolate, Arnold. It's scientifically proven that chocolate can cause headaches. Perhaps, Arnold, this defect suits you, since you'll never have to feel the physical pain that I have to inflict on you. But don't celebrate just yet, buddy. Pain can also be emotional. So hold on. For example, unrequited love. This type of pain is experienced by people who sold their Bitcoin in 2015. Arnie, friend, cheer up. You don't feel pain and this can help emphasize your individuality. For example, you can insert a diamond into your forehead, just like the famous rapper Lil Uzi Vert. There are some people in the world who don't feel any pain at all. This is a consequence of a defect in the SCN9A gene. Such people can distinguish cold and hot. They feel touch, but the pain signals don't come through. Arnold, are you really gonna beat up Tagai's boyfriend for that kiss? Remember, Arnold, not feeling pain doesn't mean that you're immortal. You need to go to the hospital immediately. I see, you're still the same lazy guy. So while you don't feel pain, even ordinary tape will do. Oops, it looks like the effect of Dr. Joe's drug is over. Welcome back to normal life, Arnold. Hey, I see the late night beer bash is a big success. But don't forget, in the morning, you got a conference of below 60 IQ YouTubers. And if you're late, your career is toast. There's no time for the toilet. You gotta hold it, buddy. The bladder comfortably holds 150 to 200 milliliters of fluid, but after 400 to 500 milliliters, you'll feel some pressure. You must have drunk a lot. Eee, looks like the boss is in a bad mood, and for sure he ain't gonna let anyone take bathroom breaks. 
Fluid is absorbed into the kidneys, then descends through the ureter into the bladder. You're probably feeling a bit stressed, Arno, because now you got to hold the pee in with your muscles. I recommend you don't laugh, Arnold, or sneeze, or cough. Anything like that weakens the muscles, and you might start leaking. Hooray! Break time! You're saved! The average person goes tinkles six to eight times a day. Ooh, no luck there, Arnold. In ancient times, rules of decency allowed people to go wee-wee in public, and the division of toilets into men's and ladies only occurred in 1792. Okay, break's over, buddy. Now it's your turn to give your presentation. If you hold it in for a long time, the bladder walls can stretch, so you can hold even more PP. But this can be dangerous. Bacteria and acids in your urine can crawl back up into your kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. It seems, Arnold, that everyone approves of your dissatisfaction with company policy. Come on, Arnold. I know you can hold it a little longer. Just 50 more talks and then you're free. Well, that's it. Time to go home. And Arnold, I advise you not to make any sudden movements. If your bladder is that full, it could pop. Yay, you're almost home. Now we just have to get through the morning rush hour. Move slowly. Oh no, it seems your neighbor's coming, Arnold. You know, the guy who likes to give everyone a big hug when they meet. Ooh, that's not good. You know, Arnie, one Dr. James Hamlin has shown it's possible not to wash for over five years. Let's do a challenge. The surface of our skin is home to a huge number of bacteria that form what's called the microbiome. It's understood that if you avoid using soap over an extended period of time, your microbiome balance will naturally stabilize. However, if you don't wash for even three days, you'll start to itch. Don't worry. Go get some air. Clearly, after a few days without a shower, you've started to stink something awful. Okay, not such a bad idea to buy a bunch of deodorant. The global trend of using fragrances to mask the body's smell first appeared in medieval Europe. At that time, people bathed on average only two times in their entire life, at birth and at death. Yes, the evil odor is gone, but frequent use of deodorants can cause allergies and shortness of breath, and the aluminum salts they use can even lead to the growth of cancer cells. Even in our time in our modern world, there are still people who wash themselves very rarely. In addition to the homeless, there are the residents of the far north, the Eskimos and the Chukchi. Are you feeling like a pile of garbage, Arnold? Permanent non-washing can lead you to a loss of self-esteem, and the kids next door would paint your house with graffiti and tease you about your stankiness. Where are you going, Arnold? Oh, I really hope you don't do anything stupid. Arnold, there you are! You've decided to move in with the Chukchi. Congratulations! Moreover, the challenge is finished. And your microbiome has come back in balance. Your skin has become soft, fresh, and your acne has completely disappeared. But wait, what's that? It looks like today the Chukchi are celebrating a holiday with ritual bathing. First, they put on all the clothes they have and try to sweat as much as possible. Then they scrape each other's skin clean with bone scrapers. And after all that, they grease themselves up with seal fat. Arnold, you're now about to be bathed in the best traditions of the far north. And you certainly can't run very far. They'll find you by your smell. Don't worry. Every person is talented at something. For example, heard of a guy from China who got into the Guinness Book of Records because he didn't blink for 57 minutes. Hey, where did you go? Arnold! What? You broke the record? 
How? You glued your eyelids! Oh my god, it's really dangerous! Blinking is necessary to lubricate your eyes with moisture. Our lacrimal glands contain antibodies, lysozymes, and electrolytes. Without them, your eyes will become defenseless. So, I'm afraid you won't be able to admire your literacy for long. The smallest particles in the air will begin to settle on the eyes and scratch them. In addition, the longer you don't blink, the more you want to. Arnold, there is one secret. Blinking has another function. It shares the information you receive and renews your attention. This means that the more interesting stuff you see is, the less you want to blink. Try to distract yourself with something calming. Yes, I think a good old black and white movie will do. There are three types of tears, reflex, emotional, and basal. Because your eyes are dry, the tear glands are trying to make up for the lack of moisture. But the movie isn't bad either. Oh no. Who knew the film would have a nuclear explosion in it? Arnold, how do you feel? Bright light hurts you. Your vision gets worse. These are signs of conjunctivitis. It needs to be treated properly. It sure won't go away by itself. Be careful when reading the drug instructions, Arnold. With vision of plus five, it's very difficult to read up close. But with myopia at negative five, you'll have problems with viewing objects in the distance. Ladies, stop it! He didn't see anything! Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! Looks like you got beat up by the pharmacy security and you lost all your belongings. I wouldn't stay in such unsanitary conditions for long. Don't have the strength to go. Eerie similarity to the symptoms of adenoviral conjunctivitis. This happens when the retina is torn and the virus penetrates through it. Arnold, you could sleep through your whole life. Get up already. People sleep for one third of their lives. During sleep, the body is restoring. Some species of birds, marine mammals, and reptiles can stay awake for up to 10 days. One half of their brain is asleep while the other one is working. In order not to waste time, streamer Asian Andy slept online and earned $16,000 in one night from donations. I think someone's breaking into your house, Arnold. Arnold, who are these guys? They don't seem anything like your friends. Congratulations, Arnie. Somehow you've gotten yourself into what looks like pretty big trouble. Again. What the jumping Jiminy is this place? Looks like a college dormitory at not the best university. Wow, Arnold. Looks like you could be a superstar in a new reality series. How on earth did they get a file on all of you guys? Whoopsie daisy, I guess they got you here by mistake. What do they want from all of you? Uh-oh, I don't like this at all. Arnold, haven't you been able to sleep? A day without sleep leads to headaches. Your hearing becomes noisy and difficult. And your memory becomes impaired. Let's believe that on average, a person can endure no more than five days without sleep. That's when the real test begins. Optical and auditory hallucinations begin to appear. The first to set a no-sleep world record was 17-year-old Randy Gardner, who stayed up for 11 days. But this was later beaten by Robert McDonald, who stayed awake for 19 days. But the representatives of the Guinness Book didn't confirm it. And conducting such kind of experiments on yourself is quite dangerous for your health. You're the only one left, Arnie, old pal. I'm reminded of one legend about Soviet scientists. They put five people in a room for 15 days with a stimulant gas that kept them all awake. Arnold, you're free! I can imagine you probably want to go home and have a good night's sleep. What the heck? Why do you look like that, Arnie? Children are watching this. You can't just go and change your style. You ruin everything, you derf jingle. Okay, did you know that on average, you speak 7,000 words a day? And after a year of silence, you... What in the... Arnold, I do everything for you. You should listen to me. Arnold, have you gone loco? This stereo system can output over 150 decibels. It'll burst your eardrums. Even a numb scullion like you should realize you simply can't do that. Okay, Arnie, that's it. Enough. 
I'm taking not only your stereo, but also your phone, laptop, Xbox, and all your toys. You thought you were going to resist me. Are you serious? Come here, you little schmuck. Take that, you ingrate. Don't you dare. Don't you dare turn on that stereo. What the heck? Arnold, if you do that again, I'll watch What If You Were Sawn Alive Into A Thousand Pieces. That's it. Now get yourself cleaned up. <laughs> After a year of not speaking, your voice will drastically change. Our brains tune our voices, relying on hearing. In a year, your ears will forget how you sounded. Besides, talking after a long period of silence will hurt. Without exercise, your vocal cords will become weaker and your lungs will be quickly getting depleted of oxygen. You look strange. Are you all right? Did you change somehow? Remember, you can always talk to me. Decided to hang out in the park, did you? Looks like this burrito was out of your league. Quick, find something to drink. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or... Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected! It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly, but you will lag behind in progress and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Oh. I built a machine that makes things invisible for 24 hours. There are three possible approaches to invisibility. The first is perfect transparency, which sadly we cannot achieve. The second is camouflage, when the light rays emanating from the object correspond to the rays that we would expect to see in the absence of the object. This is exactly what my machine does. And the third and last approach is when an object is swathed in a metamaterial, something like an invisible hat, that transforms the path of light rays so that they seem unchanged. Now, we'll try it on a pizza. If everything works out, it will be a pizza that you won't have to share with your friends. Okay, I'm throwing the first switch. Did you know that the first three-dimensional invisibility was achieved by a group from the University of California, Berkeley in 2008? They created a mesh of silver microfibers that doesn't reflect or absorb light rays. As a result, the 
eye sees light only from the objects behind the camouflaged entity. Now the second switch. Don't move, Arnold. Wait, what are you... Oh, you are such an imbecile. I'd smack you upside your head, but damn it, I don't know where you are. Put this hat on so I can see you. Okay, you have 24 hours. What are you going to do? Who'd have any doubt that's where you'd go first? If my machine worked according to the principle of invisibility, you'd become blind because the invisible body's refractive index becomes equal to that of air, and the lenses in your eyes would lose the ability to reflect light rays and focus them on the retina. The retina itself also wouldn't be able to absorb visible light with its rods and cones due to its invisibility. But as I can see, your eyesight seems to be okay, you slobbering ignoramus. Okay, now that the gym is closing, can we do something else? You have 18 hours left. I meant something a little more significant, you block-headed jerk monkey. After all, you could reveal terrible secrets and perform incredible feats. You could even make your way into Area 51. Oh, right, it's in a different state. Do you have any ideas? Are you thinking about stealing it? That's a terrible idea. In any case, you need a plan. Of course, thanks to invisibility, you'll be able to stay long after closing. But then you'll need to bypass the guards. And there are also lasers all around the diamond. Can you really do a triple somersault, steal the diamond, and leave the museum in the car that will bring new antiquities for the exposition exactly at 2 a.m.? Even so, this is a really bad idea. The museum closes in an hour. Go hide in the corner and wait. And take off your hat, you mutton-headed twit. Get ready, Arnold. The main thing, obviously, is not to get caught. Arnold, it's go time! Aw, oh, nuts! All you had to do was a triple somersault, and you screwed it up again. <sighs> well, now, now you have to run for your life, Arnold! The exit is just around the corner. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Damn, looks like you stole a glass copy of the diamond. Well, I gotta say this is an unfortunate turn of events. Although, to be honest, it's pretty logical that the original would be kept in a safe. Now you'll never have the love of the beautiful tug eye. Unfortunately, you're gonna become visible in just about an hour or so. So, good luck escaping. I love to wake him up when he's sleeping so sweetly. Get up, lazy butt! I have something for you, Arnold. You now have just 24 hours to live. 24 hours to live. I think you should Google what to do in such a situation. Yeah. First, clear your browser history. And here are the top three answers to this burning question. How would you spend the last day of your life with loved ones? I think for you, Arnold, this probably ain't the right answer. The second option is to gorge yourself on junk food. Well, you already do that every day. And finally, number three, spend the day at the ocean with a loved one. Ooh, it just got interesting. Arnold, are you really going to do what you've been dreaming of all your life? Whoopsie-daisy, somebody ran out of gas and money. Money, money, money. Great idea! You can get a loan and really live it up on your last day. Get the maximum. You'll feel like the richest dude on the planet. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, makes enough money to buy a new Tesla Model S every 50 seconds. You're rich now, Arnold. You can rent your own plane and fly anywhere you want. What are you up to? Wow, you're going to take Tagaya from her boyfriend and take her on a trip with you. Arnold, you're my hero. Ah, uh, 
If only we could turn back time and make this moment really last. What if I told you it's possible to keep the day from ending? You need to overtake the sun. To do this, we gotta fly west along the equator at a speed of 1,667 kilometers per hour. If you can fly at that speed, the day will never end. Regrettably, this won't affect your life timer in the slightest. It's your last few seconds, Arnold. You're alive! Ah, I see. According to the contract you signed, you have no right to die until you pay off the loan. Bye-bye, yeah. Arnold. <laughs> Did you ever see the film Phone Booth? How about becoming the main character? You're at gunpoint, my gunpoint, and if you hang up the phone, I'll shoot you. Like this. Relax, Arnold. All you have to do is talk on the phone nonstop and live your miserable life. What do you usually do anyway? You watch movies, go to work. Do you even have a job? Of course you do. You work for me, Arnie. You're my bitch. You should keep an eye on the road. Every fourth car accident happens due to mobile phones. More specifically, 1.6 million accidents every year worldwide. This is six times more than because of drunk driving. Arnie, it'd be better if you had a drink. Are you listening to me? Arnold, what did I tell you about uninterrupted conversation? Stay on the line. Can you feel how your phone is getting warm? It's all about overworking the lithium battery. Lithium is an alkali metal that dynamically interacts with the environment. You probably bought your charger in a black market where they sell cheap counterfeits. This leads to battery damage and, as a consequence, explosion. Don't worry, Arnie, I'll give you a new phone, all in the name of science. I see you're tired. It's a pity, but you're not allowed to sleep. During the first two days of insomnia, you'll feel a slight trembling in your body and have difficulty with coordination. On the third day, your nutritional requirements will greatly increase as your body goes into fat-burning mode. After four to five days, you'll begin to experience visual and auditory hallucinations. Your speech will become unintelligible, although really, I don't even understand what you're saying now. And the number of words you speak per day will decrease by 80%. You'll look like a zombie within a week. Feeble, doddering, and unable to perform even the simplest of tasks. But I don't want to scare you. Tumors, now that's what we're talking about. Do you think Arnold is threatened with tumor formation due to the continuous electromagnetic radiation? Sorry to disappoint you. There's still no reliable evidence of phone radiation causing tumors. Cell phone radiation is non-ionizing and isn't capable of damaging DNA in the cells of the brain. Even one as frail as Arnold's. Now, if the phone had more power, let's say a thousand times more, such a phone will have an effect similar to that of a microwave oven. It won't lead to the appearance of tumors, but in less than a minute, it will easily melt Arnold's brain and body. You better watch a different movie, Arnie. This is Arnold. He places advertising. While the discontented crowd beats Arnold, I'll tell you why there's advertising in the world. Or rather, let's show you. Arnie, press the button. Arnold has just destroyed all advertising in the world, and with it, the international economy. Millions of companies produce mega uber super tons of goods for people all around the world. Without advertising, goods and services can't find their customers. Millions of companies will go bankrupt, and billions of people will become unemployed. What to do? Hurry, go to the Meet Arnold channel and find out what to do if all advertising fails. Wait, you can't. The channel is no more. Without advertising, no one will know it even exists, and the release of new episodes will be impossible. Arnie, you better return everything back the way it was. Yes, advertising can be annoying, but it allows for you to exist. It allows for countless very cool things to exist in this world. And uncool things, too. Take you, for example, Arnie. You suck. You almost killed that bird. Now you have to call a taxi for this lady. Luckily, it was a sparrow and not an eagle. I think your phone just ordered all of the taxis in the entire United States to one place. 
In the USA, about 230,000 people are registered as taxi drivers, more than half of whom are Uber drivers. All these cars lined up in a row will create a traffic jam with a length of 800 kilometers. One third of New York State will be paralyzed. It'll become difficult to breathe on the streets due to emissions increasing to double the usual amount. And because of that, you'll start coughing, feel nauseous, and might even suffer a stroke. Don't place your hopes on an ambulance since it can't save you or the other 3,000 patients who call an ambulance every day. You can take a chance and try to take the subway to the hospital, but the 6 million people who normally drive their cars are already on the subway. So today, there are about 11 million evil, angry, late people down there. Hey, he's the one who caused all the traffic jams. Criminals have already robbed half of the shops in the city because police can't respond to most crimes. Arnold, I think you'd better get out of the country altogether. There's a place for you on just about any plane leaving New York. People can't get to the airport and planes are flying half empty. And from this company are losing more than $10,000 per flight. Does an Arnold always pay his debts? All the taxi drivers together spent about $15 million just on gas to come pick you up. How in the world will you pay? Arnold, do you really have the money? Hello, Arnold. Another evening session of degradation watching TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space. And space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of six kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're gonna have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside and you don't want to walk here for very long watch out i forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived and they've mutated just a wee little bit you better run to infinity and beyond arnold how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state arnold you better not touch anything what's going on Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century, and we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? 
Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic. These medieval Catholics are so wild. They believe in every... Did you know, Arnold, that there are 15,000 nuclear warheads in the world with a combined capacity of about 7,500 megatons? You should also probably know that five minutes ago, I sent one of them in your direction. There's no point hitting the gas, Arnold. The electromagnetic pulse wave killed all the electronics modern cars are so chock full of. Next, you're going to be hit by the shock wave. Even if this old rust bucket were made of solid graphene, which at the atomic level is even stronger than diamond, and you somehow miraculously survive all this destruction, you're still going to go through living hell. Wake your skinny ass up, Arnold. We need to check how far you are from the epicenter of the explosion. Remember, if you see a mushroom cloud, stick your hand out in that direction and raise your thumb. If the cloud is bigger than your thumb, then you're in the radioactive zone. What a lucky guy. Do you have sunscreen? It won't help, you dumbass. I'm joking. You should run away from here. Fast. Radioactive isotopes in small quantities have already begun to slowly destroy your DNA. How do you feel, my friend? Yes, that's right, it's a good time for a shower. Avoiding contact with contaminated items and using special water procedures can increase your chances of survival. Do you have a water filter, Arnold? Even the weakest radiation will result in progressively malignant tumors. Well, congratulations, you got through a nuclear attack and you no longer need a Halloween costume. But this isn't the end. If someone in the world launches a missile with a nuclear warhead, a domino effect will follow. All the nuclear powers of the world will let loose their dogs of war. Then comes the real apocalypse, Arnold. The era of humanity is likely to end. You're gonna die, my friend. It's time to get out of this universe. Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean. I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're gonna shoot the explosion on it and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter. Or I guess not already.
So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly. Your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two... Oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! What a trip that turned out to be. Hmm. I think you may need a visit to the oncologist. Arnold, do you know just how nincompoopian you look right now? I wonder who took your protective suit. Hmm. Did you ever see the film Phone Booth? How about becoming the main character? You're at gunpoint, my gunpoint, and if you hang up the phone, I'll shoot you. Like this. Relax, Arnold. All you have to do is talk on the phone nonstop and live your miserable life. What do you usually do anyway? You watch movies, go to work. Do you even have a job? Of course you do. You work for me, Arnie. You're my bitch. You should keep an eye on the road. Every fourth car accident happens due to mobile phones. More specifically, 1.6 million accidents every year worldwide. This is six times more than because of drunk driving. Arnie, it'd be better if you had a drink. Are you listening to me? Arnold, what did I tell you about uninterrupted conversation? Stay on the line. Can you feel how your phone is getting warm? It's all about overworking the lithium battery. Lithium is an alkali metal that dynamically interacts with the environment. You probably bought your charger in a black market where they sell cheap counterfeits. This leads to battery damage and, as a consequence, explosion. Don't worry, Arnie. I'll give you a new phone, all in the name of science. I see you're tired. It's a pity, but you're not allowed to sleep. During the first two days of insomnia, you'll feel a slight trembling in your body and have difficulty with coordination. On the third day, your nutritional requirements will greatly increase as your body goes into fat-burning mode. After four to five days, you'll begin to experience visual and auditory hallucinations. Your speech will become unintelligible, although really, I don't even understand what you're saying now. And the number of words you speak per day will decrease by 80%. You'll look like a zombie within a week. Feeble, doddering, and unable to perform even the simplest of tasks. But I don't want to scare you. Tumors, now that's what we're talking about. Do you think Arnold is threatened with tumor formation due to the continuous electromagnetic radiation? Sorry to disappoint you. There's still no reliable evidence of phone radiation causing tumors. Cell phone radiation is non-ionizing and isn't capable of damaging DNA in the cells of the brain, even one as frail as Arnold's. Now, if the phone had more power, Let's say a thousand times more. Such a phone will have an effect similar to that of a microwave oven. It won't lead to the appearance of tumors, but in less than a minute, it will easily melt Arnold's brain and body. You'd better watch a different movie, Arnie. Arnold is trying on his new multi-million dollar super tough suit. Hey, you dumbass, put your underpants back on. Today, you're going to visit the smallest and largest planets in the solar system. Do you hear me? You're leaving in one minute. Pull harder. Ready? Go. <laughs> Whoops. We flew too far. More precisely, the sun pulled us in. Now, to overcome its gravitational pull and reach Mercury, we'll need more fuel than we would to leave the solar system. Huh, it worked out somehow. It's dead hot to the left and ice cold to the right. I'll drop you at the junction point. The temperature there is about minus 100 degrees. Great plan. Or it could be if we were on Earth. You can't slow down with a parachute here. Almost all of Mercury's gases have scattered into space due to its weak magnetic field and gravity. What a beautiful sight. Mercury is three times closer to the sun than the Earth, so the sun looks much bigger here. You idiot. 
Mercury also rotates, but one day here is equal to 88 days on Earth. Pick your butt up and run! Gravity is 62% weaker than on Earth, so your already puny 40 kilograms is just 15 here. <laughs> now you weigh about the same as my cat. Don't move! Yep, moisture comes out of the body. Stomach gases are pushed out. I told you not to drink Coke before we left. The fluid in your soft tissues turns to gas. This explains the bloating. And stop! Ten seconds. Great! Your brain and heart are still working, and death would have come in 80 seconds. Our next stop is Jupiter. Calm down, breathe deeper. Inhale, exhale. Breathe. Dive! With its powerful gravity, Jupiter's pull is two and a half times stronger than on Earth. Your speed is that of a Bugatti sports car, 430 kilometers per hour. Now row out of here, you blockhead. You can't even...